Hi dudes at ringside, it's Akila here from CPW Wrestling. I just want to do a big shout out and congratulate you guys for reaching 300 episodes on your podcast. Hope to see you guys really soon. Cheers! Hola, hola, Ringside Crew. This is Nay Robles here, and I'm here congratulating you all on your 300 episode mark. I am so happy for you guys, and I hope you guys get to do many more. Hope to meet you guys soon enough and forever and always. Saying hello from the island of Enchantment. Hasta luego. Hello, my lovely Killjoys of Dudes at Ringside Podcast. I am here to wish both Metal Geek and Joe Panther III a very, very special happy 300th episode. Congratulations, guys. I've had the privilege to be on the show a couple of times now, and so have my friends. Uh, actually, even I made an appearance with my lovely fiance, Tyler Osborne. And I have to say, my favorite moment of all time being on there has to be Mom and Dad are fighting again. Iconic moment. <laughs> Anyways, congratulations, guys. I hope you have a thousand more and even more than that. What's up, dudes at Ringside? Congratulations on 300 episodes. I think the favorite, uh, my favorite part of my interview was probably when I was talking about beating people with a cane or like with grandpa's cane or grandma's cane. Anyway, um, good times. Check out dudes at Ringside if you haven't already. Um, it's a good time. Yep, 100% guaranteed you'll be on my next show. <laughs> what a great deal I've made for Savage Pro Wrestling. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Savago. I'm the promoter of Savage Pro Wrestling, the hottest new promotion going. And i got to say congratulations to the dudes of Ringside Podcast. You guys have been a great supporter of us. And we can't wait to see your 300th episode. You've done so many. i got to say, I'm so impressed with all the work you guys do behind and in front of the camera. You guys are stars. And i got to say, my personal favourite from your podcast got to be... Kiara, the Queen of Savage. And anyway, keep on doing what you're doing, guys. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Not as great as me, though, running Savage Pro Wrestling, but still great. <laughs> There's antimony, arsenic, aluminium, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium. You guys invented the move, man. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> straight from the creator's mouth. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. Oh god, that train's wow. gonna be really long, geek. We'll be like there for like <laughs> hours and be around the whole arena, didn't it? I, I reckon some of the production stuff can hit harder than the wrestlers. That's oh jeez. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the dudes at Ringside Podcast. I am the one and only, the voice of a generation, the voice of We Are Wrestling of Invictus Pro Wrestling. Pete Rosado alongside Metal Geek. And Joe Panther Jr. Right up there. <laughs> he was like, what the hell are we doing? We're, like, we're going to grab you. We're going to backflip. You're going to front flip. We're going to do it. It's the Prize City OG on Instagram and Twitter. Same handle on TikTok too. Follow their podcast. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why you're even on this show listening. It's obviously because you're a fan of me, but nah. You know what it really is? It's because you're a fan of this podcast. So follow everybody. Bro. Come on, say. These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard. There may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. Wow, Jill. Wow. Hello there, wrestling fans, and welcome to the 300th episode of the internationally known dudes at ringside podcast i am your lovely host joe the panther the third and now from the top of metal mountain all covered in streamers and balloons in the middle of the mosh pit that's gonna be an accident later it's a happy self the metal geek what's going on ringside crew what's going on internationally known what's going on everybody what's going on joe welcome to episode 300 300 yeah, we thought we were gonna make it that far <laughs> just so, talking some people to some people thought we'd make it past 10 <laughs> yeah <laughs> we had some we had some people in our that we used to hang out with during the podcast but right. <laughs> it's always over with that all right but, you want yeah. to 
Oh my gosh! Here. Yes, is everybody here, Geekums? Um, we we have some people, but you know. Okay. Let's give a warm 300th guest welcome to Sarah Bubbles and the one, the only, Bobby freaking Blaze. All right, Sarah, you going to say hey or what? Because if not, <laughs> my deal is this. It's Bobby motherfucking Blaze. Let's get that right right off motherfucking the top. Motherfucking Blaze, Joe. You're I'm messing up, man. 300, baby. 300. 300. Congratulations. <laughs> Haven't had yeah. a podcast of my own that we stopped counting after 200, and I think we did another couple after that. I can't remember how many months we went, but 300, that's a huge number, and congratulations. I mean it most sincerely as a person, as a human being, as a podcaster, and as a professional, former professional wrestler, trainer, but loving podcast. Congratulations, gentlemen. That's awesome. Thank awesome. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It means a lot, Bobby, because, like, as I said, I'm Mr. Old School, and, like, <laughs> you see, people, they, they, I told people that watch wrestling, that that watch wrestling by me, and they're like, Bobby Blaze. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, do you realize how good, how cool that is? I'm like, yeah, it's cool. I, it didn't hit me till now. Even more, oh, even man. more. The legend Bobby Blaze, right there. Like, man. wow, man, that's, that's, that's great. PA, you well, got I'm glad to be here, here man. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, and wow, Sarah, man. good to see you. As always, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to be here. Bobby seriously, Miss Bubbles, yeah. it's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen you. Yeah. It has. It has. So, uh, either of you, if um, if our fans are f not familiar with you, even though our fans would know who uh, lovely Miss uh, Bubbles is, introduce yourself. <laughs> Well, I would hope they would know Bobby more so than me. He should be more well known. Um, but I'm Sarah Bubbles. I've been training for a little over a year now. Um, I train with FTC Wrestling out of Ironton, Ohio. Um, I am the female powerhouse. I'm the bubble buster. And I'm just here to spread positivity and burst anyone's bubble who gets in my way. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And Hopefully, in the near future, I'll be getting on YouTube. Yeah. There you go. All right. All right. Well, Sarah Bubbles, what's up, girl? Good to see you. <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks again. Joe, Metal, check it out. So, yep, I'm Bobby Blaze. I said Bobby motherfucking Blaze. There's an old story to that, but I'll get into that maybe later on. We'll just see. <laughs> but the bottom line is um, I know who I am. I'm secure who I am. And, um, I'm old. You you mentioned Joe. You say you know you do old school. Well, I represent that man because I'm old as. But what is? I had my first match September 11th in 1988. Long time ago. I think that's what 34 years ago. Um, currently, I'm the head trainer at FTC. The failure to confirm. Uh, conform, uh, confirm. No, conform over at the wrestling school. And um, you know, just something that's been going on. FTC has been going since 2016. And um, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I started going back over and, and you know, all the shit going on in the world, whatever. But uh, nonetheless, man, I'm glad to be here and glad to be a part of something. Um, I'm just going to throw us out there from the top. Uh, you know, life happens, and that kind of happened to me. I had a had a very good career. I'm very blessed, uh, very fortunate. Um, life happens, like I said, but I... I I put this and I, we'll get to some books and stuff in a minute. I'm not here to plug all that. We're here to have a good time. But a, a famous author named Richard Bach said this, and I put it in a book. And, and, and Sarah can kind of attest to this last night. This is kind of one of the things I said outside leaving the building after we'd done training. Um, here's a test to find whether your mission on earth is finished. If you're alive, it isn't. And, and by, so I put that in one of my books because um, – Life happens, and things happen in my life. And I, I took a little trip down the bottom of a little step yesterday. So, and Sarah was way out in the parking lot, the rest of here. And I said, "Ah, oh, motherfucker, that little step about got me again, but not tonight, you know." And I, <laughs> but here's the thing: the deal was this. I was like, because I feel like I have that one more good thing left of me. And when this opportunity came to to help train at FTC, that was a one good thing. And then a lot of came just sometimes things happen in your life. And, and I just keep thinking at my age, and I, I'm not I'm I'm not saying I'm 90 or whatever. 
And hell, if I'm lucky, it'd be 90. I don't, I don't, if I feel like this now, I don't know how I feel at 90. I'm just saying, but, uh, I've, I've been very fortunate, man. And, um, uh, life goes on and I'm still here and I'm not done yet. I've got that one more good thing in there in here and in here to help people pay it forward, give back to something I love, which is professional wrestling. And before COVID and some different things happen and going back, I've always supported indie wrestling. I loved it. Uh, I've loved professional wrestling since I was 10 years old. And that's a long time ago. And also I've always supported women wrestling. Uh, especially as a trainer, because as we was talking off air um, a few years ago, we were training some people and I said, man, if we just had a couple of girls or ladies um, and, and Sarah, if I say the boys, it, it includes the, the girls as well. It's just kind of, you know, that's just old school mentality or whatever. But um, right now is a tremendous opportunity as a female performer or professional wrestler. And um, man, I've just been, I don't see people, I hear them say this. I see it on a license plate about blessed and this. Ah, fuck all that. I, don't, I won't say I'm blessed. I'm lucky. You know what I am? I'm living life and I'm fortunate to be yeah. where I'm at and be able to give back to and pay it forward for something I love. And that's professional wrestling. Hop to <clears throat> sports entertainment. Just saying. There you go. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Yep. 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 So, so a couple of questions, uh, oh, uh, Bobby. Um, I was just gonna ask, um, what was it like working under Jim Cornette and in Smoky Mountain Wrestling? <laughs> well, Jim <laughs> gave me my first big break in the United States, and what a lot of people don't know, unless you know the full story, and I'll just kind of share it rather briefly here. It took me nine months to get in with Smoky Mountain Wrestling. When when I I was in Florida and I had been training. And I went to a tour uh, in Canada twice. I'd been in South Africa. And um, long story short, uh, I, I knew Tommy Rogers from Fantastics, worked out the same gym I did, trained out Malenko's and this and that. And I was trained by the great professor, Boris Malenko, and we'll get into his son, who you all probably know as the Iceman, Dean Malenko. So Tommy ran into me and said, hey, Bobby, I've been working this territory. It's opening up. Uh, Jimmy Cornell's opened the territory. And this is in Florida up in your home area. Aren't you from Knoxville? Well, I'm a couple hours from Knoxville, but in Kentucky, Tennessee, that whole tri-state, quad state uh, area. And I said, yeah. And he goes, man, Jimmy's going to start something big and um, you ought to give him a call. So I gave Jimmy a call and he said, hey, Bobby, I'm, I'm really busy. I'm going to line with so-and-so. I'll call you back. Well, he didn't call back that night. I saw Tommy the next day and he said, did you talk to Jimmy? I said, briefly, but he called me. He said, be home at nine o'clock tonight. Jimmy will call you. Long story short, I was. Jimmy and I had this great conversation. I'm not full time, uh, and and Jimmy never lied to me. That's where I'm going with this, okay? And Jimmy paid me every cent that I ever earned working for him. And I have so much respect for Jim Cornette. And, yes, I'm a Cornette guy. Put that out there right now. So, anyway, the next night, Jimmy calls. We have a great conversation. He says, well, I'm not opening full time yet, but these are the plans Here's some dates. Uh, if you're in, I said, well, I'm down in Florida. I just kind of filled it out, whatever. So I had a tour he planned to go to Australia. So again, in between, I get back from Australia. No, I get back from Canada. I'm sorry, I get back from Canada. I, I go to a show about an hour from my house, meet Jim Cornette personally, because I'm back in Kentucky for a wedding. And um, anyway, so I, I talked to Jimmy in person. He's like, yeah, Bobby, I, I, I heard a lot about you, blah, blah. So I go do that tour, nine, 18 weeks, whatever it was, nine months. So I go do that. I contact Jimmy. He says, yeah, we're getting ready to go full time. I'm telling you, I've got something for you. Just give me some time. I go to Australia. Uh, this is early 93. I do a tour over there. with. Uh, I, if you want to get into it, we can, but huge, big tour. And um, I get back and Bobby Fulton calls me. And thank you, Bobby Fulton. Um, he says, hey, man, Jimmy gave me your number and says, uh, would you like to work some? I got a couple of shows. Would you like to work them? I went for Bobby Fulton shows. And that Monday night, Bobby called me back and said, Bobby, I want you on every show I can put you on. And, and wow. I tell Bubbles this. Bobby Fulton said, come here. And I'd been over Australia working every fucking night. I was tanned. I had the, the blonde hair. The, the, you know, I worked out. I looked halfway. He goes, come here, lock up with me. We went in a shower. And I locked up. And Bobby said, you got a job. I'll see you the first, third, and main event. Because the way Bobby runs his shows, like the old 
shows out in Dallas the way they did them. 12 as a referee, and you did a captain's match at the beginning. You did a, you know, come back a third match of the gimmick, and then you worked the main event with your partner from the captain's match. Word got back to Cornette, and Cornette calls me after the Blue Rass Brawl and says, hey, Bobby, would you like a tryout? Robert Gibson uh, twisted his ankle, and uh, they, they's working Bobby, uh, he's working Bobby Eaton. He's up in Pikeville, Kentucky, and um, Robert took a badge, Bill twisted his ankle. I said, my God, a tryout match, yes. I tried out Brian Lee. Again, this is a bathroom story. And Cornette and I have so many bathroom stories. It's funny as fuck. Just tell you that straight up. He goes, Bobby. So I get to the show. I'm in Beckley, West Virginia. He goes, Bobby, uh, come in. So I've already talked to all these people. Uh, Dutch Mantel, uh, Jimmy Golden, Tom Pritchard, whatever. And we're sitting there kicking. And Jimmy comes in. He goes, Bobby Blaze, the second most famous person from Ashland, Kentucky. Well, at the time, Billy Ray Cyrus was blowing up. And I'd heard that shit. Cause I had a chance to be in the old achy breaky heart video. So oh, really? and I didn't cause I said, Oh yeah. Cause I knew Billy Ray through a mutual friend. He was working at the gym. I went long story, but the bottom line was I couldn't cause I was going to be in Florida and, and it just timing wise. So I see what I thought he was going to say. And he looked at me, he goes, Charles Manson being the first. <laughs> of course I fought big time. Cause I'm like, how many people know fucking Charles Manson had been through and visited, lived here for about a year or so of his life in Ashton, Kentucky. And mm-hmm. Bubbles kind of heard that with uh, Brox a couple weeks ago. He Brox knew the fucking house. Damn psycho. <laughs> but anyway, just saying. So I was like, yeah. So Jimmy goes, come here. So we go to the bathroom. And again, we got some bathroom stories. We've done one at Wrestle Kate. He told one another another story. But anyway, about me and Dan Severn. So I, I know I'm going around the world to fucking uh, uh, cross the street, so to say. I go to a lot of dre- uh, bathroom. Jimmy's like, hey, Bobby, thanks for coming in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Brian Lee comes in. He goes, this is Brian Lee. I already met Brian Lee at the one show I'd went to before. I knew him from Florida. And he goes, uh, he's our TV champion currently. He was our first champ, blah, blah, blah. He goes, yep, you care to put him over? I looked and I said, Jimmy, this fucking guy, 6'8", 280, 300 pounds. I said, Brian, what's your fucking finish? <laughs> and hmm. Brian was still kind of back then. He was just kind of like, quiet and he goes well i do this thing where i pick you up and i put you on my shoulder i do a thing called a final fa- countdown and we hit boom i twist your pin you got I go, brother no problem whatsoever and i go you want to do anything special he goes you're the heel you caught a match and i go, yes sir cornette says hey bobby thank you so much i'm like i'm trying out for your fucking company you're thanking me you know <laughs> and so i go out there have a good match i do a couple of deals uh the late mark curtis is referee of course and uh, so I do some things to Brian, and he gets up, and he says, uh, dick drag me. <laughs> well, I start cracking up, because I know at this point I'm over, because we're talking a little bit in the ring. Like I've been in Australia for 20-some-odd days, 25 days working every night, you know, and I'd been trained. and I, So I just gave him an arm drag and started cracking up. And, and then we lock up, and he takes me to the corner. He's telling Curtis Hildebrand, he goes, I dare Cornette to hire this motherfucker. Well, I didn't know how Brian spoke at that time. So I was like, is he being, you know, is he being like offensive to me? Like, I dare him to hire him like I'm worthless. And then he done a couple things. He was like, but Brian Lee used to always say, I dare you, meaning in a good way. And he goes, I'm going back and telling Cornette. I'm telling Cornette. He kept saying it to to Mark Curtis. And I'm like, what the fuck is he going to tell him? You know, well, he gave me a good report, of course. And that's when Cornette called me a couple weeks later. And I did a four-day loop because Robert was out. And I got to open up every night show. Uh, they moved uh, – Ricky Morton was up top. They moved Horner up top. And they moved me to the opening match. And Tom wow. Pritchard, Dr. Tom, worked the opening match and the main event. And now, how cool is this? You ask how I got to work with Jimmy Cornette. He put me in a first match with Tom Pritchard and him managing Tom from the Heavenly Bodies. So the guy that owns the company is watching me that far away. Mm, wow. And I'm in there with Tom listening to what Tom's calling because I'm a baby face. We're over in Kentucky and Virginia area uh, doing the four days. And I put Tom over. Tom we didn't even talk. He just said, hey, do this, do this, do this. And he said, you know how to do this? And I said, yeah. Did it. He reversed it. Powerbomb. Boom. One, two, three. Easy. Okay. So fourth night, we're about an hour from my home. And Curtis comes to me and says, hey, Bobby, what's your finish? 
And I said, well, I'm tying my boot. I'm like, I'm fucking putting Tom over the first match, whatever you all want. He goes, no, we brought a guy in that's going to put you over. Jimmy likes you. We like you here. What's your finish? And at the time, I just did his drop kick off the top rope. And I said, just tell the guy to watch drop kick off the top rope. And I go, by the way, who is it? Told me a guy's name. I said, oh, I know him from the end of show. I, I worked with this guy and um, knew he was good, too. I said, just tell him to watch the drop kick off the top. The rest is easy. And the guy's name is Mike um, Sampson, good-looking guy, good body, and um, had worked in Memphis and some places, USWA, et cetera. Went out there and gave me a good match, and after that, Cornette gave me a break, man. Worked for him for darn near uh, three years. Never had an issue uh, with two things. Uh, he got heat with me one time, and we'll go into that story later because I want to eat up all the time here. And then a, a money thing at that he just said, hold on to this. And both of those things were uh, rectified and take care of in that time span that he said he's going to take care of. Those two things. One is I was getting ready to go out there and watch Larry wrestle Larry Santos. We had these spots worked out and I was there like two and a half years time. And I won't say worked out, but a beginning of the match and bullet Bob was in the middle. I was up top of the stairs. Larry was at the bottom and I turned around for some reason. And I said, Larry, forget everything I said about the opening. Attack me as soon as the bell goes off. So I'm over taking my jacket off. He attacks me. Boom, boom, boom. I get on him. Northern Light Suplex, one, two, three, win the match. I come through, and there's Cornette. God damn you, Bobby Blaze. You <laughs> motherfucker, you. You <laughs> dumb son of a fuck. And it's Cornette rant. And he's going, you fucking, you trained by Malenka. You know a million and one, not a thousand, <laughs> but a million and one fucking moves. And you go out there and have a guy goddamn attack you when, as soon as you take your jacket off. I'm like, Ugh. I'm going to stop the stairs now. I'm going, what the fuck? And he's just ripping me a new one, man. And he goes, I got, and I felt sorry for this guy because I really liked him a lot, but it was Doug Furnace's brother, Mike Furnace, right? He goes, I got Mike Furnace that can do one fucking thing, and that's a tackle. And I had Killer Kyle attacking him when he takes his jacket off. And that motherfucker can't do nothing except for take his jacket off and do a tackle. Now I got to change the whole fucking match. <laughs> so, he had to put, <laughs> so he had to put a sub match in there. He ran down and put a sub. This is TV. Put a sub match in there and told, so there wouldn't be two matches where the guy got attacked. I remember going back to Robert Gibson with a new asshole. And so I could barely sit on a bench. I go, and I had to do another, I had to do another match. Me and who was tagging because Ricky is time. Ricky was gone at that point for a couple of months and another story there. But anyway, I said, fuck man, I lost my job. Hoot, I'm done. Hoot. <laughs> and he goes, Bobby, you know how long I've known Cornette? He said, forget about it. Soon, as soon as he's done, he's done. It don't, don't worry. I said, oh, no, man, I fucked up. I should have went out there and wrestled a guy done what I had to do. Northern lights and get out of the ring. Who's like Bobby. For, Jimmy's done forgot about it, believe me. I shit you not, uh, half an hour goes by, 45 minutes, whatever, for the next segment, and I'll be damned if uh, Brock's boulder don't show up. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and no, then I, Brock shows up. <laughs> yeah, and then I go to, uh, get ready to go up there, and Jimmy goes, Bobby, you and Hoot, you got – I had Tommy Rich and uh, 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 Terry Gordy. He goes, have a good match. And that was it, and we never spoke about it again. That's how – so that's how it was working with him. Later on, another situation came up, and he said, Bobby, hold this check uh, until Monday and do me a solid, and uh, it's good after that. And and I never – that was it, you know. I held a check until the, whatever time – another week or whatever it was he asked me to hold the check, knowing it would bounce if I got home and, you know. But he knew, and he said, just hold it. Do me a solid. Hold it for a week, and it'll be good. I'm like, I wasn't broke, and I didn't need it that particular second. I held on to it, and the next week the check was good. So everything Jim Cornette did for me, said for me, helped me out. I love Jim Cornette. I'm a Jim Cornette guy, and I respect him so much in the world of professional wrestling because he helped put Bobby Blaze on the map, let alone in the future puts the junior heavyweight title on me and eventually puts me in with Jerry the King Lawler in a main event in Knoxville Civic Coliseum wow. and gives me a run with his title, the Smoky Mountain Heavyweight title. So working for Jim Cornette was a complete pleasure. Uh, bar getting my ass rimmed for about five minutes, but other than that, for three fucking years, and to this day, there's nothing but love and respect. That's I know it's a long story, but that's how I feel about working with Jim Cornette. It, 
How can I not work? How can I work? I say this. How can I work for Jim Cornette and not learn something about the wrestling business? Him, Bobby Fortin, Buddy Landell, all the guys I got to work with, especially Jimmy, one of the greatest minds in professional business, uh, wrestling, and Kevin Sullivan being there as well. How wow. can I not learn from Jim Cornette and Kevin Sullivan when they come to you and say, Bobby, this is good. Let's try this. Don't do that. Let's do this. And we're going to push you. Fuck. I'm over like Rover. Thank them guys so much, you know. And thanks for asking the question. Good question. Brox, welcome to the program. Bubbles over on the fuck she's talking about. She won't shut up. <laughs> you're, on dude, you're on a dudes at ringside podcast wearing a Bobby Blaze shirt. Say something. And we had a 300th episode, too. Yeah. Well, 300. 300. Welcome. 300. Brock Boulder, welcome back to Dudes at Ringside, my friend. What have you been up to? I have been, uh, you know, just running the wrestling business and all. Because that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. 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 How are you guys? Good. 300 episodes deep now, brother, man. This, this, It's independent wrestling to me. Like... If any of our past guests are watching this podcast, we just want to send a huge thank you to everybody. 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 Everybody, everybody. everybody from every state we've we've conquered. Not conquered. That sounds so wrong. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like my state now. Huh? It's called Panther. Panthervania. There you go. <laughs> Geek State. Geek State. There you what, go. <laughs> I, was, would Geek State be New York? It'd be Geek York? There you go. I guess, Geek, I guess so. I guess Geek so. York. Go. Geek York. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, every country, every state that we've had on this podcast, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so for much. answering your messages. Thank you for putting up with our shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> and thank you for making all the promos. And thank you for, like, just telling your friends. As I, My dad always says to tell the wrestlers, tell your friends yeah. that's number one and like and also by us doing this podcast we have now opened up our eyes to indie promotions from all over the world and all over the country like on my in my youtube all i get is people from england i get like people from tennessee like everywhere geek it's just like i put youtube on and i'm like Ooh, what state is this from now? <laughs> like, you know, it's funny. A wise man told me that he felt like that that the independent scene was dying, and it was dying, and it was almost dead. And then, just here in the last few years, it's almost resurrected itself to where it's it's everywhere, and everywhere there's a, there's a good independent promotion that runs. Um, here, it's FTC. It's it's our promotion. You know, we're the lifeblood around here. I feel like we're we're the, we're the standard in this area. But you go anywhere, and there's there is a standard wherever you go in independent wrestling now, and it's because of the the, the training that these guys are getting and 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 being professionals, which is the most important part about wrestling, being a professional and doing those things and uh, all those things I learned from, learned from a very wise man. I don't know who talked about that, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. The one by me, it's uh, the, the one in New York. It's Creative Pro. They dominate over in New York. So cool. Oh God, they so dominate. It's like they, they everybody else thinks, oh, we're this is our market, and then Creative Pro just like looks down them like Andre, like you <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like puny human. Yeah. <laughs> What's really good about our area is it, it, ours is they're they're spread out by like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. So we can have our own territory if i can say that if that's a thing and all of a sudden um great show by the way it's becoming that i think brox i really yeah. do it's it's almost getting back to that territory again because like with us mm -hmm. we have we have one that's about an hour and a half away that's up towards charleston west virginia um bobby and i are attending a really good one that's in chillicothe ohio it's about an hour away on saturday um ran by uh bobby fulton uh i'm just telling you like we it's becoming a territory thing and in here when, when you think about wrestling in this area, everybody's like, well, FTC is the gold standard. This summer, we spent the whole summer at Carter County Fair, Lawrence County Fair, Boyd County Fair. We were at the Martin County Fair. We were all over the place this summer. We ran, you know, eight, nine, ten shows all summer long, and all of them saying, please, come back next year. Yeah. So mm. um, it's becoming a territory again, I feel like. Yeah. And this, again, yeah. thank you guys for recognizing your fans. If it's not for the fans, we don't have a show. You know, right. yeah. you don't have a podcast, but thankfully you're doing something positive. You're doing something good. And FTC's out there doing our shows. 
and the fans, they show up. We have a group of people that show up every show irregardless, and uh, we just keep picking up more and more fans, and uh, we keep expanding. And um, it, it's really, like I, like Brock said, um, I said it. pro wrestling has coming off life support, and it's got up off the fucking bed. It's opened the doors. It's walking down the hall, and there's a when you open those doors, man, they're stepping out there going, I'm back, you know, and, and it is, there's a lot of good opportunities in independent professional wrestling right now. And there's a lot of good promotions out there around the country and I'm sure around the world as well. So, yeah. um, thank you fans. Yeah. Thank you for coming back. Like, yeah, it was like last July. I went to my first show with metal geek on long Island. What was it like? 13 years since me and you actually were physically sitting next to each other at the show geek. Uh, wow. An independent show. Yeah. yeah we we yeah. did that Friday. We did five shows, five podcasts. And then we went to a show and we were sitting each other walking around the arena. Nobody knew who we were. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I said it to geek last week. I said, do you think it's been the same? Will we actually go to a wrestling show to, together again? at An indie show. Do you think the fans are going to be like, Oh, who are they? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> or do you think they'll be like, meh? <laughs> no, I, still, I still think they'll say, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. Asian lady. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. She doesn't even know me. <laughs> My That's case. Okay. Who, who are you, green girl? <laughs> <laughs> I heard this great thing by Henry Rollins one time. Uh, and he was in, he went to this country and uh, he was, you know, he's photojournalist in addition to being a fucking hardcore legend, rock or punk rocker, artist and uh, author, etc. And and he went to this country and there's like this wild shit going down a couple blocks away, like almost civil war happening in the streets, you know. And, it's, and then here's a white, you know, American, you know, and uh, this guy jumps over and he's kind of stereotypical, we'll say Middle Eastern or whatever. And he's got the gun and all this, and he's looking at Henry Rollins, and he goes, because he's kind of feeling him out, like, whose side you on, and this and that. And and I've used this. It's worked. It's worked for me. And the guy was kind of aggressive, and he goes, you know, who are you? What are you doing here, man? And he goes, hey, my name's Henry Rollins. I know you don't know me, but I'm here to meet you, man. I'm here to meet you. And he's taking photos, and the guy starts explaining what the hell is going on down there. And Henry didn't even know what he's getting into, like who sides this, who sides that. The dude took him into his home, didn't let him stay at a hotel he had put. And, and just he figured out the whole political scheme of things by just saying, I'm not here to fight. I, I'm here to meet you. You know, I'm, I'm here to just see what's going on in your, in your part of the world. I've come up on people on the street before and, and, and uh, at a show or whatever. It's no different. Who the fuck are you? Well, you know what? I'm Bobby. I mean, I, I, it's my, I'm sitting here. I'm meeting you. How are you? What's going on in your world? Be surprised how their perspective and their questioning changes all of a sudden. Like, oh, well, I'm John Doe. And, oh, fuck. Uh, put their gun down or, you know, whatever. Not that that's happened, just saying, or recently. <laughs> I've had some different <laughs> fucking neighbors. Uh, mm-hmm. I've lived in crack and meth areas. Uh, prevalent throughout this area, unfortunately. But um, I'm like, God damn. I'm not here to fight you. I live here, <laughs> you know. Uh, chill out. Let's 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 talk about. It. And, uh, oh, okay. And it, that happens, you know. They don't they don't know that you're the guy that's went and wrestled all around the world, or that you know you help train young people, up and coming talent, or whatever. I'm like, hey man, I'm Bobby. Nice to meet you. I live down the street. I'm there's no beef here. Don't fuck with me. Ain't fucking with you. We're cool. And and that's what you do at them shows. You you, you meet these fans like. God, they realize that's Sarah Bubbles. That's Brock's Boulder. Oh, that's Bobby Blaze. I remember, or whatever. And that's the way it should be. Not that whole aggressive, like little the lady you mentioned. They don't know you. Fuck it. They don't know you. Tell them who you are, and let them know, man. Hey, that guy, exactly. that girl, they're all right, man. That's two guys that do the podcast. That's just two dudes doing a podcast. That's who they are. Look at the look at that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, hey, Bubbles, won't you? Uh, can you calm down a little bit? Yeah, really. Like, oh, my God, a drink or something. Bobby. Good, yeah, God. something. I, I wish you'd be this Listen, quiet. On I mean, it, that's great. Well, <laughs> Bubbles, <shut up. laughs> she just want to, I just want to hug her. I'm like Bubbles. No, wrong way. It's okay, Bubbles. It's okay. 
the right way. <laughs> <laughs> the hands are here. They're trying to hug Geek over here. <laughs> I was trying to like a fake hug or tap on the back. I didn't know it, 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 like mirror thing. Here, right it gets me. You can touch yeah. the ponytail. There. Aww, the ponytail. Yay. Aww. <laughs> I gotta get canceled for that. I've known her two years and I've never touched her ponytail. Just yeah. so you know. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna come back to haunt me. Like Joe yeah. touched my ponytail. People like to talk, Bobby. People like to talk, Bobby. We gotta keep our distance. I, mean, I know. I, I, I have. To You're only old enough to be my dad, not my grandpa. Remember? God damn you! <laughs> I thought we had this talk already. You don't have any baby <laughs> girl issues. No, sir, not. It's all good, honey. It's all good. I know. I know. I deep down know. Oh no! You're gonna give Joe a heart attack. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> she goes. She she just. We just had that discussion yesterday about that. Go ahead, Sarah. Tell him I'm not your granddaddy, but I'm not trying to be your daddy. Joe, either. do you need a minute? Do you need to take it off the screen for a minute? She says she don't have daddy issues, but just do rocks. the. There you go. <laughs> rocks. There you, go. Um, there you go. I think I know, Brock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have daddy it. issues. My Joe, I know that. We talked about that. <laughs> no, know. Go. I don't. Next, go. next thing you know, <laughs> Bubbles be wearing Orioles shit to training. <laughs> 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 and by the way, Geek, I'll tell you the story. We have tell a training. story. We have a training oh, here. Geez. Oh, She'll remain name. Remain nameless, but you guys know her. Yeah. So, all right, welcome back, Joe. You got a good story welcome coming. Welcome back, Joe. So, Joe, Joe, Joe just tuned in just in time. He's like, good story? I, all right, I'm back. I'm back. This is why I never talk. This is why. They don't let me. I said, hey, you had an opportunity. I said that next thing we know, Bubbles will be wearing Baltimore Orioles shit to training in here. Oh, we have a who I won't, rem- I'll, I won't name, but you, do, you guys do know her. She has been on your show. Oh, your money, huh? What? Always, yeah. She's uh, <laughs> she always seems to wear Baltimore Orioles crap to training, which is, as we all know, Bobby Blaze's favorite baseball team. So oh. she gets oh, the no. best positions, she gets the best positions at line drills and and all this other stuff. She gets to go first, and she's always first to get drinks, and you know, <laughs> so now the bubble got the old daddy issue thing worked out with, with Bobby <laughs> wearing Baltimore Orioles shit going on. I don't have daddy issues at all. <laughs> Dad, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. It's, the boy. it's not me. Blame these guys. It's not me. Chase them down. What You have plenty of property. Bury them wherever you want. Listen, She's a I, good girl. Watch it because I am her favorite wrestler and I don't want her to be mad there at you me. Go. Don't you're talking be about my mom? Him. Yeah, I'm talking about your mom. No. I'm my favorite wrestler, just so everyone knows. I am Bob is my mom's favorite wrestler. So here's a funny story. I don't know if I've told this on your guys' podcast before, but no, um, when my mom comes to our shows, <laughs> I had a drink. <laughs> she wears two shirts. <laughs> she wears my shirt and she wears Brock's shirt. She always asks who's who's going first. So she wears that shirt on top, and whoever's going second, she wears that shirt underneath. And so after the first match, she takes that shirt off for the next match. Oh, God. <laughs> so that she's oh, not her favorite, you know, between her daughter and her favorite wrestler. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was talking to this one girl one time. You talk about a fucking uh, mic drop. So I'm talking to her. And Sarah, here's the thing that happens is, is like, I'm like kind of inviting myself over to Thanksgiving. I'll go to your mom's house, your dad's house and. And, and they'll be so glad if you bring me along because I'll get along with your parents. They'll love me. And she goes, so when your mom takes off the last shirt and she has a Bobby Blaze shirt on, which ain't happening, <laughs> just say this other chick goes, yeah, Bobby, you know what it is? Because you're the same fucking age they are. And she threw the broom down. She's sweeping in the store. And I'm just talking to her. And she goes, I know you get along with them just fine. You're the same fucking age they are. Threw her broom down and walked away. I cracked up so fucking hard. I, and she goes, Mic drop, and that was when that thing was popular. And she threw the broom down, and I was like, God damn, I just got burnt. And I sit at this table, just sitting there, like having a beer, and I go, Whew, well, that hurt. But and we're still good to this day, but it's like she got me so good. So, Bubbles, if she wants a Bobby Blaze shirt or a Baltimore Royal shirt, I'll get her one, and she can wear it underneath the Sarah Bubbles and the Brock shirt. 
which probably ain't going to happen because she got a husband and has no daddy issues, obviously. <laughs> Baltimore <laughs> Orioles. He's a big. Well, I was there guy. for a long time, yeah. several times. So I lived so there. Listen, uh -oh. I have the memory. Oh, of Joe's getting the tattoo. He's, he's getting the tattoo out now. Oh gosh. <laughs> I can't well, see it. I love. I love the whole Eastern Division there. Wait, Joe, you want me to put, you want me to put I'll put it on you. There you go. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, show your tattoo here. again. I knew what it was gonna be. I knew what it was gonna be anyway. <laughs> yeah. How about the Orioles? How many hey. when are they playing in the playoffs? When are they what what what's them what like what's their no. time slot? <laughs> My youngest son's named after Brady Anderson. Uh I was there, not the night Ripken broke the record, but the night before we tied it. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh but you know, huh, I just like that whole um the American League East. I like that division. That's what I was brought up on. Other than Cincinnati, that's my favorite National League team. So here's the deal. I deal with two fucking losers all the time through baseball season. Although we won what nineteen ninety with the uh Reds and I go back to eighty three at the O's and this and that. But you know, here's the thing. New York, uh this year maybe uh, Dodgers. I mean, the teams with the fucking big market money teams are the ones going to fucking win it because they can afford a fucking. Once the guys had three or four years at Baltimore or Cincinnati, they fucking just hire them. Come on in, we'll pay you this, this, and this. And I'm not getting all the fucking. Uh, what do you call that? Baseball negotiation. It's just the way it works. It's a fucking business, and you're paid for your talent. And you know what you need to do is go to those big market teams. So you can win a fucking ring, a trophy, and get paid millions and millions of dollars for something that very few people that walk this earth can do, and that's play professional baseball or football or basketball or even professional wrestling, as I tell these two and many other people were there training yesterday, and so many people say, I wish I could do that. Well, if wishes was horses, beggar would fucking ride. And I'm looking at them going, hey, well, that." No one rides horses anymore, Bobby. I get it. What well, they'd fucking still be out there hitchhiking going, I wish I could do that. But you know what they do? They sit on a couch and they don't do shit. But these two and a few other people, they get out there, they train, they bust their ass, they do what's asked of them, and they represent independent professional wrestling. And it's happening all over the country, all over the world. And it's off life support. And that motherfucker, fans are going back to it because they're seeing quality professional wrestlers. And that's, that's to the baseball thing. That's yeah. why your New Yorks and your LAs and 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 whoever is going to win those big titles because they're getting paid rightfully. And these two, along with so many others, should be so lucky that some of these big companies, whether it be AEW, WWE, or whomever down the line says, we want you, come here, do our TV, be an extra, do a dark match, or be a star or whatever, and get fucking compensated and paid because you busted your ass in the world exactly. of professional wrestling and you deserve this, you deserve that because you have put into it and that's the way it's business work. You get out of it what you put into it. And that's my Definitely. rant. But anyway, there you go. Go New York. <laughs> do, go ahead. Both... I think Dodgers may have it this year, but I don't know nothing. Yeah, yeah so, I know. <laughs> I know. Like, just they, saying. they both deserve it, by the way. They yeah. both yeah, do exactly. deserve yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I personally think that, like, Brock and Bubbles, you guys, you guys are doing big things. Like I know yeah. you've only been in the business in a short time, Sarah, but like the stuff I've seen you post on your Instagram page, I'm like, wow, she's doing a lot. <laughs> this she girl's is. doing a lot. Yeah, she I'm had a match in January, uh, excuse me, February, and I, uh, one of her matches, and I, I see several people. I run into them at the gym or here or there, and I had a person, and then another person, another person say. Man, I can't. And they had another. They had a, another match, her, and uh, Reese and Ramon the Show Pony, and uh, in June it was on my birthday. So from February to June, people have come up to me and said, "I can't believe those are the same two girls I saw just a few months ago out at the Boy County where we were at the community center at the time." which was not one of our regular locations, uh, which may be in the future, but but our home base is probably the Rone Theater. We've luckily got back in that in the last uh, couple of weeks ago, I guess. But um, they could not believe how much they improved from February or January uh, until, yeah, February, that shows February, till June, it was the same two girls. And they tore it down that day. 
And the same thing with Brock's. He stepped up is a year ago, uh, October 1st. And we were in a small building because we couldn't get to Rone. And a hundred, hundred of our regular followers, uh, fans of uh, FTC, and Brock said, Bobby, I'd like to talk to you something about something. And he, he just threw something out there. I said, man, I don't know. I think you're doing good. Just just hang on. Well, that night, he won a big fucking battle royal. He won the fucking OAG, the Art of Grappling Championship. And he's carried that well. It was the right decision. And um, our fans are following these people. They're following Sarah Bubbles. They know she's going to burst your bubble. And Sarah... When I heard her say, I'm going to burst your bubble, not bust your bubble, and I heard her talk a little bit, I said, this girl's educated. I don't need to help her too much on her promos. Give her some pin, some points, bullet points, boom, boom, boom. She can take them there. I don't think I've ever said too much other than, well, you know where the fuck you're at. You know what you're doing. Get out there and do it. She does it. Brock's the same way. They both got strong promos. Um, in ring, they're doing wonderful things, learning each and every day. Up in their game with suplexes. Sorry about that. Kick my mic. Suplexes or moves or learning or whatever. And having matches and carrying the shows. And um, there them two and a couple others. Uh, this is just me speaking, uh, letting everyone know at their world of professional wrestling, independent wrestling, whatever. They're ready to do extra work for AEW or WWE. They're ready to expand outside of, of, of FTC, which they have. They've worked some different shows. They've worked for some different promoters. And um, I don't know if they'll get rich, but I do know this. They will keep on expanding and expanding their fan base because when I say rich, because promoters, you know, uh, sometimes people make this and they make this. and they, you, 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 I always tell people, first you learn to wrestle, then you learn to work, then you learn to make money. They're starting to learn to make money. They learn to wrestle. They're learning to work. Now they're going to learn to make money. And I'll get to this in a minute about Dean Malenko. One thing about it is I was at one point, and I'm doing this and doing that, and Dean said, learn to not let the wrestling business use you, but you use the wrestling business for you. It took me years to figure that out. I'm so glad I can pass that on now. But uh, that's what's happening to them. They're learning to to get out there and get these bookings, et cetera, and um, they're getting to where, like you said, Joe, uh, uh, at the show, uh, well, who are these two guys sitting by each other? They didn't know me or whatever. They're getting to where people know them outside of, like, FTC in our surrounding areas. They're like, oh, okay, this is Sarah Bubba. This is Brock Boulder. This is, you know, the Geek Metal. This is uh, Joe, whoever. We're getting that stuff happening now. But it takes time, as you all know to build up that's why we're here today episode 300 you started somewhere and i know how hard it is we got when i was doing a podcast um my partner and i uh he was called the geekish cast um uh, jeremy had a thing and i, I appeared at his program uh, i had a chance to be on some other programs and finally we did a deal blah 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 i won't go to details on that but um we reached episode 100 but we had only agreed to do 18 months and we needed a break we did that we took a break. He got sick. I got sick. And this and that. And things happened. And none of us, neither one of us, fortunately, had COVID. He had some health issues. I had some health issues. We said, let's, these people want us to do back. Let's agree to another 18, another 18 months. We did another. So we got to 200. We kind of quit count, like I said. So for you guys to reach 300, if you're out there in podcast land or podcast bill, I'm telling you, it's hard to reach 300 fucking podcasts. And I'm honored to be on here with you two gentlemen, along with Sarah Bubbles, along with Frost Boulder. And it's a pleasure because I love doing these podcasts and I love being a part of the wrestling community. Um, and I might be that motherfucker got up off life support and walked down a hard and kicked the door open and said, all right, motherfuckers, I'm here. What's <laughs> next? What's fucking next? Because I got that one more good thing left of me. Was a match, whether it's a book or whether it's just training young people. Uh, uh, there's something good in all of us. We got that one more good thing in us, you know? So that's what I'm all about. And I hope these two understand that because I think they do. And again, congratulations on 300 episodes yeah. of the Dudes at Ringside podcast. Absolutely. Yeah, and look, add something to the congratulations. I mean, 
How many times have you on your on your in your three hundred episodes, two two hundred ninety nine for that matter, have you had two champions on at one time? Yeah, because right now oh. sitting above me, about right here, is the current. F- Here's a story. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> no, bunch right now. There you go. Someone caught the reference. There you go. Sarah don't watch TV, but anyway, I'm just saying it. You got yeah. two champions on your podcast right now. I mean. Mm. So we're honored to be here, but also you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Listen, That's a Ross great is one. so humble. Like I don't even know how he I don't know. Here, I'll do this. <clears throat> he's gonna get it. Oh, he's oh I thought he was gonna get the stuff. I thought he's gonna, oh. I thought he was gonna get the belt, man. He's getting Uh-oh. spruced up, you know. Oh, he's fixing his hair. That's an old Buddy Landell move. Pull out the pull out the comb and start like, all right, we're gonna put him over now, Brox. We got, you know. So does does that mean I have to get that picture on front that felt came through my Facebook memories today of the upside down Oriole and send it to Reese Reese Ramon? Be like, yo, Reese, how you doing? (laughs) (laughs) How you doing? (laughs) Go for it. X is in the eyes. If, if Ric Flair could have one more match, you could have one more match too. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, right? Rock versus uh, that Bobby. Ain't that. What? Ooh. No, okay. on, hang no. on. I can't do any no. more goddamn jobs. No. <laughs> <laughs> My manager come to me and say, "What? You put this guy over? What the fuck?" No, I don't. <laughs> I don't know if there's one more or not. Uh, we'll we'll see, and who it'll be, I don't know. And and um, I do think there's probably a couple more that may proceed that leads up to that one more but we'll see um and that's all i know i don't know nothing man i i i, I didn't know what was going to happen last show and um if you'd asked me three weeks ago that took place what a week or two ago mm-hmm. uh, no idea and it just happened and for those the references brox is the art of grappling champion and uh as buddy landell said and as arn took away from and I even compliment when Arm was here he had the shirt that had the glass that said toot toot I won't toot my horn but my own horn but toot toot <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm the FTC champion how it happened I don't know it just happened and it, but but here's the thing the person that dropped the title I, I, I started telling us about yesterday in training we was talking about different things uh, I have a lot of respect for this gentleman I helped him years ago. He's a legit tough guy, MMA fighter and this and that, and he had the strap. And uh, the bottom line is he done a huge favor for FTC and for myself. But here's the thing. He didn't lose a match. I won a match, and there's a difference. So he still has all respect in the world. And it's just like when I went over on Jerry Lawler, I would say beat Jerry Lawler way back when I was in Knoxville at the Civic Coliseum. They put the Smoky Mountain heavyweight title on me. Well, how many times has Lawler been beat? Doesn't matter. How many times he's won? Doesn't matter. He's had a fucking successful career. And that night, he didn't necessarily lose the title to Bobby Blaze, but Bobby Blaze won the title from him. And if you're a wrestling fan or understand what I'm talking about, and I'm sure you do, there's a big difference. So how you win and how you lose is just as important to the fans whether you are a loser or a winner. But the bottom line, I think, is every time you step out from that curtain and into that ring, you're automatically a winner. Win, lose, or draw, if you give your best effort, you made it to the show, you're a winner. And you do what's asked of you. And, like, two things. And I I heard Terry Funk say this with – championship and i've used it in reference to the smoky mountain heavyweight champ i didn't beat anyone the fucking they penciled it in you know what i'm saying yeah we're working we're trying to make money we're having fun and then with a bigger comparison no disrespect to new york on this one or new jersey Uh etc um (laughs) one of the best things i ever heard was by little um little steven that played uh uh Sal on uh, uh, The Sopranos. And I, I was watching talking Sopranos and I read his book. Um, and he said, uh, and you know, he's in the E Street band and all that, and you know, the character, et cetera, right? 
everyone with me except Bubbles. She don't watch TV. But you heard a TV show called Sopranos Bubbles? Yes? Cool. Yes. Guys, yes. I know you're with me. But what do you think happened in the last scene of The Sopranos? Some people say Tony died. Tony lived. It was a dream and this and that. And uh, little Steven said, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. And he said it on The Talk of Sopranos. He said it in his book. And apparently it's one of his answers early on, way back when the series ended. He goes, this is what happened. And this is what happens in professional wrestling sometimes. So I have a point. He said, the director yelled cut, and the actors got up and went home. So when I won that title from Lawler, that's what was penciled in. The promoter, the owner said, this is what's happening. Bobby Blaze goes over. I went over, I won, the matches ended on Sunday, Buddy Sunday, and the fans went home. And most of them went home happy. For a fact, Nisku can attest to this because Brock's brought up being champion. When Brock went over in uh, last year for the Art of Grappling Championship strap, the place went crazy. I had no idea. So a couple weeks ago, October 1st, you know, 10 or 12 days ago, whatever it is, whenever you see this podcast. I went out there. I done what was asked of me. The champion done what was asked of him. It happened. Boom. And guess what? All the fans were fucking happy. That's the way. It, that's that's good writing. That's good creativity. That's life. That's hot to entertainment. I always do that. But it's a work. And we worked. And no one knew but about four or five people. The same with Lawler. About four or five people knew. Myself, Cornette, Lawler, Mark Curtis, and Buddy, maybe, and White Boy. Five, six people. And, and of course, Bob uh, Armstrong knew, the commissioner. But that's it. You kept it kayfabe. We kayfabed a couple weeks ago all the way up to that night. And you guys could tell me your experience or tell them your experience at that show, how over it was. It's a work, but I loved it. I'll tell I'm you, glad to be a part of it. I'll tell you mine for sure. Uh, just just as a comparison, um, we, we, there's a balcony in the Rone Theater we have a lot of our shows at. It's an old, it's an old uh, play theater is what it is, and it's been revamped. And the neons out on the on the roadside on the front of the building. It's it's a really nice place. Yes. Um, uh, but there's a balcony, and that's where a lot of us workers will go up and watch the matches away from the fans. That way we can watch and things like that. Well, there was me and and uh, I think Bubbles is up there with us and uh, Titan Troy, who's uh, my new tag team partner. We can get to that if you guys eventually want to. Juan, where's Juan? He's like Waldo, and nobody knows where Juan is that anymore. Uh, anyways, um, me and Titan Troy, a couple of us was up there, and and when he wins that title, I lost my ever loving mind. And, and to put it in comparison for you guys, I was fortunate enough to go to Dallas this year and watch WrestleMania. Wow. Me, the owner of FTC, and then Troy, my tag team partner, and a couple of us went down to Dallas and watched WrestleMania both nights. My hero growing up was Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's, I mean, he just, I'm old, I'm 41, guys. So they, I was, I lived through the attitude era. That was my era for wrestling. Um, so Stone Cold was my hero growing up. So to go see Stone Cold Steve Austin in Dallas for the first time in the ring in 19 years, when that glass shattered, I lost my ever loving mind. But to put it in context for you guys, I lost my ever-loving mind the same exact way when Bobby Blaze won the FTC title. If that tells you guys anything, the respect that the guy has in our locker room and in our school and, and just in the area, I lost my mind like I did for Stone Cold Steve Austin, who, in no disrespect to Bobby, is one of the biggest stars in wrestling ever. If, none, none, arguably, none taken on a comparison. You told me that the other day I about start tearing right. up, had to fucking walk away. Arguably, maybe one of the best. I mean, and I have a skewed view on things. I have, and we won't go into this very far if you don't want to. But I have this view of the Stone Cold kind of saved wrestling when he came around. I thought it was downhill, and then Austin three sixteen was born, and then it turned into the Attitude Era. Absolutely. Maybe not agree with it, but that's that's my view on it. Bobby Blaze for me, winning that title. Not that I had any kind of like ill feelings or I was getting burnt out or anything like that towards the business. That's not it at all. Because um, as Bobby says, you come to these trainings, you go to these shows, and no one made you. So when you show up, you're doing it yourself. 
and I do that every week. So I still love the business, but watching, and I, and I know he hates this word, but watching my trainer, one of my trainers, because Jillian Hall is a big part of my, of my training as well, but Absolutely. watching one of my trainers, my mentor and my friend win the FTC title and lose my mind like I did with Stone Cold. Man, I can't tell you. It's, I got chills right now just talking about it. It was – we all lost our mind, every one of us, because we're all, we're all cool. trained under Bobby. We've all, we've all learned something from Bobby. So all of us up there lost our freaking minds, and that's the impact of Bobby Blaze. If, that, if you needed that, whether you needed it or not, you got it. That's the impact of Bobby Blaze. So I told that story for a reason about the Sopranos. Okay. The director said, cut. The – Actors went home. This is professional wrestling. You know what the greatest hold in professionaling, professional wrestling is? Is the hold that it has over its fans, including myself. That's the best hold, man. Now, I can go on and say the worst hold is this, the office hold. The office <laughs> hold is when they got the pencil. The pencil is the worst hold. They pencil you in, lose, 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 lose. Don't pay, don't pay, don't pay. Okay, that's the worst. But the best is the hold it has over its fans, ourselves included. Because I told you, I think yesterday when I was speaking, and I'll tell you gentlemen, and I'll tell the world this podcast, if I'm not agenting a match or haven't trained a person or know the finish, I don't want to know because when I go, I still want to have that moment of disbelief. I'm paying or being a part of something or viewing in the back. I want to see that finish. And I want to pop myself. Oh, that was a good finish. Oh, they fucked up. Oh, it's great. They missed it. Oh, yeah. Because I'm still a fan at heart after all these years, thankfully. And I had Kevin Sullivan here at my home before, and we'd done a seminar. And, and, and I, I said the word Mark, and we was talking about this yesterday as well. And he goes, don't, don't disrespect the fans, Bobby, as saying, Mark, we're all fans. We're all fans. And I was like, oh. And that was about five or six years. I can't remember my time frame on my, my, my mind. Sometimes it could have been longer than that. Uh, but but fact is, he, heard, he, he was here and he said it. And we're all fans, you know. And so uh, that's the whole day that we have as professionals. Um, we've got that hold over the fans, man. And, and to that last moment, and you do the kick and you do the DDT, and it's one, two, three, and it's like, oh fuck, boom! There's what you work for, that pop, and everyone there. Oh my gosh! They, it doesn't matter if it's my match. When you got a match right there, and and if you're one of people right there, like you were saying, Brock, you just fucking lose it. Like I can't believe it. That that's what you. That's what you. That's what we work for. That's what we train for. That's what we live for. Let's get that pop. You know, mm. so anyway, yeah. yeah so I'll chime in real fast, boys. Um, yeah. this is why I don't talk much because <laughs> them. I don't, my yeah. I can't point right. Anyway, so um, I I know I I'm not quiet about it. I didn't know a lot about wrestling before I started training, and so still like I find it hard to just become a fan of wrestling. Like I watch wrestling for research purposes for the most part. Um, but I was watching that show, you know mostly for research purposes. And I see the guy, the, the uh, previous champion come out and he starts talking and, <laughs> and I know, I know it was, you know, work, but then he starts talking about the man that we, we love Bobby. Like we do, we love Bobby. Thank you. And so he starts talking about Bobby in the most hateful way. And I'm like, this can't happen. Like this, this is not okay. Um, even if it is a work, this is not okay. Um, so I start getting a little heated, you know, and I'm looking at the boys. We're all up there in the balcony and I'm like, what, what do they, and I always look at Brock's because if anyone's clued into something that's going on, it's most likely going to be Brock's. So I look over at him and he's kind of getting a little antsy, a little heated. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'm like, okay, something's not right here. And then the guy just keeps talking and talking and talking. And I'm like, what's happening? So I literally asked him, I'm like, okay, we go into the locker room now. We're going to like rush the ring. Like what, what's the plan here, boys? Cause this is not, that's not how this is going to go. Yeah. Like, um, and then the promoter comes out, Joe, and 
um, I was like, all right, finally, like Joe's going to shut this guy up. Like we've had enough because nobody talks about Bobby like this and gets away with it. Like, cause I was like, I felt the emotion, you know what I mean? Like I was on that, uh, Brock's named it. It was a roller coaster. Like I was like, okay, so you would have to see this guy to understand, but this guy's like jacked. Like yeah. he's probably every bit of six feet tall and he's like solid muscle, but I was ready to like take him down. Like all five, one of me was ready to <laughs> beat him to a pulp because he was talking about Bobby, who I really admire and I adore. And I see him as a friend and, and a mentor. And you know what I mean? Like I was ready. I had all the emotions. And then Joe says, but I'm not your, I don't remember what he wore, competitor or something. Oh no! And then Bobby comes through the curtain and we just erupt. We're all just screaming. We're all just like, yeah, oh my gosh. And so we're just going nuts. And Bobby comes out there and he just like takes care of him. Like, I think they said eight seconds. Wow. Super. And oh. we were just losing our minds. And I remember going down, like, because as soon as it happened, we all just like take off. I, <laughs> one of the boys said, I don't know who got out of the balcony faster because we're all just like, Phew. You know, we wanted to see Bobby. We wanted to go talk to him and be like, oh, my gosh. Um, and I remember going down and I said, I get it. I understand why people really like wrestling. Because like, I was never able to understand it until that moment when I was actually invested in one of the wrestlers. And I actually, like, cared about that guy. Like, because I remember the night that Brock's won the championship. And I was like. I don't know if I ever told him this, but I was like legit crying because I was also watching from the balcony that night. And I was like yeah. legit crying. But Brox and I are like, shoot, best friends. I don't know if he sees it that way. So if not, hey, I see you as like a bestie. Anyway, um, <laughs> so um, but that was like before wrestling. You know what I mean? So I, did, I knew him before he was a wrestler. And so I felt like that was a different. But I didn't know Bobby at all before I started wrestling. So I know like people who are in the wrestling world, to think that I had never heard of Bobby Blaze <laughs> before I started wrestling. They're all like, that's crazy. Like how, how had you never heard? But so now to like know him as well as I do and on the personal level that I do and to have like that deep care and respect, but to reach that level of intensity. Thank and you. Emotion, I'll get your ass in a parade and get you a damn icy. <laughs> <laughs> You've already done that. And um, I know so you two are shoot friends, but thank you so much. So yeah. uh, in the Orioles shirt, I wear a size probably like medium. Just saying. <laughs> oh God, you're gonna make me get all like Orioles. Man, no, guys, like, I already owe you a shirt. Though, that was really that. cool. I like, do like that shirt, Bobby. I do like your shirt. Yeah, a good shirt. I have those shirts, but uh, I don't have bubble size, and I already owe her a blaze shirt. So now I guess I'm out getting fucking Orioles stuff too. <laughs> about I didn't do it, but I almost sent a private message to uh the show pony the other day saying man weather's changing because i wore one my 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 youngest son was in for his birthday and uh we looked across the table with the lunch and i was like uh, we both had orioles hoodies on different but same orioles and he goes Is that like mine i'm like ah but anyway i started saying it's weather's changing bring out that o's hoodie you wear sometimes and i didn't because we used to do this deal where people wore the same t-shirts or different things sock whatever it was during training and I was like, this is failure to fucking conform. I wear what the fuck I want to wear. No one's going to, I'm a grown ass man. Don't tell me what the fuck and wear because I wear just the opposite. I'm not going to some fucking private Catholic school. I'm not a part of some fucking club because if I'm like the old saying, I don't want to be a club. If I'm a fucking member, I don't want to fucking be a member of it. Fuck that. I'm my own man. But anyway, they'll get those references about the old shirts and stuff. But coincidentally, sometimes people do show up wearing certain things and you're like yeah whatever you know and um that's a good thing because if you like the yankees you like the yankees you like the cowboys you like the cowboys depending on what your sport is you know um you like the Warriors, you like the Warriors, you like ftc you like bobby blaze wear a fucking t-shirt get one you know yeah. get you. one get a fucking yeah. book while you can let me get a cheap plug and i'll get more cheap plugs in than an anal plug Oh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, oh, I'll be here. I'll, I'll be here all night. No, this I'm not, this just the first cheap plug I'm putting in there right now. Just there ease up. Let me lube it up. Oh, okay. Fist out. If you go to there. You go. Damn. 
If you go yeah. to Amazon and go under Bobby Blaze Medley or just go into oh. Pin Me, Pay Me, Have Boost Will Travel, that's my first book, or I kicked out on two, The Educational Wrestler. Go there and purchase a book, download. It's easy to fast, fast, easy to download, or get a print uh, edition and, and get it for the wrestling fan and your family for the upcoming holiday season. Get one for yourself. You don't have one. They both average out about a four or five star rating. And when I ask people, I don't go around begging for reviews. Um, I, I don't interact on Amazon with any reviews. All I ask for is a fair and honest review. I've had a one review that I asked to be removed. That because the book review was Bobby Blaze sucks. Well, that might be true, but it's none of your business who and what I fucking suck. <laughs> but the book didn't. The book didn't. That's not a review. That's a joke, people. Uh. Yeah. Again, <laughs> help me here. Help me here, Panther, please. But anyway, no, I'm just saying. Uh, so I've got a lot of fair and honest reviews, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate anyone that downloads the book or gets a copy of the book. And the same go through the T-shirts. And I'll try to hook you guys up. I've got a couple of deals I have to take care of right now before I reorder anything. But when I do, shoot me an email or shoot me an, uh, shoot me your addresses via private email, and I'll try to do what I can do. And okay. um, and I do uh, appreciate that. But um, I've got to, and I owe Sarah Bubbles a damn. Now I owe her a medium blaze shirt. I already knew about that. Now I got to get a fucking Baltimore Orioles shirt. <laughs> But the book, you're a was, book too. She um, wouldn't read it. She wouldn't. <laughs> I have to send. I have to send Sarah a nice New York Yankees hoodie because that's more respectful and the colors are nice. I give you seller. I'll find you a bright pink one. Match the your get, whole. Do uh, that. Hook her up on that because that's gonna be more over. Honestly, I see people. One of my best friends is a Yankees fan. I, you know what? I like baseball. I love baseball. I enjoy it. Uh, but Brock's and I, we, we both like Cincinnati, but we don't talk about that often. We had talk about baseball here and there. We talk about wrestling, but I like, uh, so, and the same thing about UK football. We like UK football, but we realize, oh, fuck, we're going to get beat this week, or this is going to happen. We're going to upset someone, but we don't go around going, oh, fuck, did you see that fucking game? No, we just, we sometimes rolls off our back like water off a duck, you know, but I'm deep down <laughs> like, oh, fuck, I know Brock's probably watching that today or whatever, you know, so. So it, to me, it's just like all about whether it's political, religion, sports, whatever. You know what? Like Henry Long said, man, I'm here to meet you. Let's just get along, man. Let's yeah. just get along, have a good time, get you a shirt, wear a shirt. And I guarantee it, if she had a pink fucking New York Yankees hoodie or shirt, it's more over than the fucking anything in Baltimore. Yeah. Believe me, I live there. I live there. I know. Anything's going to be more over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, now it's listen, something. Joe, you live in Pennsylvania, don't you? Yeah, for 15 years. Uh, hey, Brox, I, if he lives yeah. in Pennsylvania, tell him what I really want from there. Okay, what do you want? She, listen, if you're going, if you're in Pennsylvania, you, I don't know how close you are to Pittsburgh, but she's going to need a Steelers. Yeah. But I'll, she, I'll she's, look and see what I could get. I'll take find some some Steelers something. That's what I want. <laughs> He's definitely a Steelers fan. She's a Steelers. I am too. I'm not. You know, it, it's funny. I grew up in New York, and I'm a, a diehard Jets fan. If I have to, if I go to a Steelers game, I'll throw in a Steelers jersey. I'm not going to be like, ew, this is disgusting. <laughs> like, yeah, listen, I've I was this been close to, to having a show in Meeks, Mc, McKeesport, mm. this close, which is like a half an hour from Pittsburgh. Mm. And then they, they canceled the show, like, last minute. Well, well, I saw just saw what, what Show Pony did. During one of those shows, she 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 actually donned a uh oh uh, what's it what's a uh, oh the Ohio State jersey is what oh you're talking about? Oh my god, yeah. dude, she State. about to die. Yeah. <laughs> We're not even gonna talk about. It. Listen, I, I beat her so hard that in that show. Myself, but... Like I beat the bedazzling off of her in that show. Just saying. I loved it. I loved I was it. like, dude, I'm, I'm, a, rocks. I'm in PA, so I kind of laughed because you know Penn State and stuff. I was like, what? She wants to this girl. If this was long New York, and she wore that, about like no, she Listen, would we get were like an bumped. hour from Columbus, where Ohio State was playing at home that day. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and she had the nerve. Like no, how girl. was the crowd? Did they say that she got booed out of the building, or did oh they? Oh my gosh, it was so bad. Like yeah. she should have known better. I don't know what she was thinking. She just doesn't care. The, 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 yeah, there was really funny. Like when where you come out of the entrance way. Right where you get to the ring on the corner, the very corner of the chair was 
literally the biggest Ohio State fan I've ever seen in my life. And I mean that by, by like, I mean, he was a, he was just a big dude, you know, and he had this huge Ohio State jersey on. He, and and uh, he, he come, she come out and he saw her and he was like, yeah. And then when you see, he reads and he's like, oh, like he's hard. <laughs> he's like, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> he just goes down. He's that like, poor guy. Oh, man. You know, because he just like his whole world. <laughs> He's yeah. like this this little girl just gave me the beating of my lifetime without even doing anything to me. Yeah, yeah I, I I know somewhere it's on video, but he, she's coming out and she's doing her thing, and he's like, you can see the colors, you just can't see the bedazzled. I hate Ohio State on the front. And he's just like, oh, that girl right there is the best. What does her shirt say? What the hell? Oh, <laughs> it just kind of melts like, oh, man. <laughs> it's like, you got to put that in a meme. It's like, hello, darkness, my old <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's owned. What's it like? Grand Theft Auto, it's like, failed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's awful. Yeah, I saw that. And at first, I just thought Ohio State, and I said, oh. I did the same thing. Oh, I said that's that's over. That's that's it's just getting heat, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I, it's, that's the whole thing. But uh, back to <laughs> Pittsburgh. So I won't even say I'm a Ravens fan because I was Ooh. like NFL football at one point. But I'm big. I'm more like in the college as far as experience that I watched the Super Bowl, whatever. But I've probably been to more. And I know it's not probably. I have been to more Pittsburgh Steelers game than any other NFL team, and I've went to several. I'm talking a bunch of Cincinnati Bengals games, um, but and I've been Ravens, but um, only because a person I knew, and this almost threw us up the other day at camp about Marshall playing tonight. Sometimes people come through with tickets, and I happen to guy happen to know a guy that's a salesman and on a route and did West Virginia and Pittsburgh and all that. And every year, like you're, you're so-and-so you're, you're, you're a subcontractor. I got you. So every year I get to go two or three fucking big, uh, Steelers games. I'm like, oh, this is nice, you know, comped and whatever. But, um, and I, I, obviously I'm not the asshole sitting there wearing a Ravens or a Bengals or a Browns Jersey, but I went and I enjoyed NFL football for what it was because I'm looking at them and guys going, these guys are fucking athletes. You know, they are athletes. Yeah. They're studs, you know, and um, appreciate it for what it was. So, um, and that's me. I like that again. American League, uh, the uh, uh, East Division up there. I like the, uh, the what is the uh, what is AFC North. Sorry, yeah. uh, but but you know, because used to, and I'm talking maybe five seven years ago, they were still ground and pound. They weren't doing you know three one. They weren't doing West Coast offense. They'd have like a Mar Jackson or. You know, what I'm saying these different quarterbacks and runners and today's athletes is so fucking phenomenal. So they were still that ground and pound in the NFL. And and so I, I still respect that. But now I will say this, I need to speak up about this. And like I said before we went on the show, Bubbles and Brock both understand Bobby talk. And that what I was getting at is with these athletes, um, the CTE, that's a real deal, you know. So I'm glad that the game has changed. I do think this for a bunch of, no, I, I won't say personally to these gentlemen and these athletes, but it's kind of become a pussified league, if you will. Let me touch this quarterback. Let's hands off here, whatever. And you want to see someone get hit. You want to fucking see a helmet on helmet. I, yeah, that may have been, you know, way back when, not nowadays. The fucking, they know too much about the brain, and I don't want to see that. Um, nope. As much as I no. would love to say, I want to see someone get jacked, motherfucker. No, <laughs> I want to see someone fucking live, uh, exactly. get live, live their dream and play at the professional level, whether it be wrestling, football, basketball, baseball, hockey, uh, any contact sport, heading in soccer, whatever. Just saying, live, uh, make their money, and also have a life outside their sport once they're done, because. That's some real shit. And when you don't fucking know this and know that, and you're stumbling on this word and that word, and you're going, ah, oh, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and I just now remember something I was talking about 10 o'clock at night. They can both attest to that. And you're going, well, I couldn't tell you what I had for lunch today, but, oh, yeah, you know what I did two weeks ago? <laughs> you know, so shit like that's real. So that's my, again, as much as you want to see the 
the the person get jacked in FL or whatever. And those guys are studs, like I said, but you also got like, huh, that that's that's real. I understand why they do what they do, you know. Yeah. Um, but but anyway, that's a whole different thing. I wrote about that in my second book. Uh, just bring second it up. Plug. I think Will Spill, huh? Plug second it. I don't anal plug. Sorry. <laughs> <Yikes. not> <laughs> Elbow. Yikes. Sorry. I watch it. You went deep uh, no, on that I one. I, Sorry, hello. YouTube, Facebook. Uh, hello. Please don't take me up here. Let me hello. bring you up here. No. Uh, I just. It. Uh, oh, uh, let me think here. Um, no, I just. Like, no. There was something about Cheerio. that. Um, you know, about. Killing um, Sarah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, There's not I, the I'm exit. Saying, you guys are disgusting. No, I'm I'm just saying like uh, I put something in there about that Will Smith book. I think the doctor's Max from Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm drawing a blank on it. But you know the movie about the concussion. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I was going with that. It's it's real, and I wrote a little bit about it. Um, and and no, I'm not trying to do a um, another cheap plug in a book. We got one in. I appreciate it. I was just saying <laughs> I did write about that uh, because um, I've seen it. Uh, and I'm not, uh, I'm not saying yay or nay. I'm just saying I've kind of firsthand experienced it. And so, and I'll leave that at that. Cause you guys said, if you don't want to talk about anything, you don't have to, I brought yeah. it up and now it's done, you know, so, <laughs> okay. so we'll see, you know what I'm saying? You guys yeah. can ask what you want about it, but I, but you probably have seen it and read enough and understand it's a real deal, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah exactly. I, I've got a question. Okay. And I have two rules, real quickly. They know number number rule number two: don't fucking get hurt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So when uh. I'm helping these people, I'm training people. I'm I'm helping people, watching them have matches. I don't ever, and I don't care what they're doing, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, or UFC, and then of course with our sport, professional wrestling. I do not, whether I'm watching them train or watching them have a live match. I don't want to see anyone get hurt. I, that hurts my heart, as we was talking about earlier. I don't want to see anyone get hurt, man, because they know my rule number one. You can both tell them what rule number one is. Don't die. Don't, don't fucking die. die. Don't die. <laughs> that's my favorite yeah. word to say, isn't right? That, isn't, that from, isn't that from a movie? I feel that's from a movie or something. I don't know, is it? A, a, quote, a quote from a movie. For us, I, it's got double meaning. Yeah, double, meaning. double Thank meaning. Thank you. Yeah, but it, it but don't die, know. man. I yeah. lost so many people our last three years. I'm like, God damn, please don't die. D just live another day, man. And that's me. Because I'm going to try to outlive a few more motherfuckers, including myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. You know. I said so. that to Geek in a random spot. I'm like, I, I, I think he coughed. Or I'm like, don't die. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Or I say, Geek, don't, before, before you last breath, please text me the code. The li the code for your it's side of the thing. It's it's the code to to all the everything on dudes at ringside. All the codes, I, all I the do it all the time. Like send me the link in your text <laughs> you need to messages. Tell me that I need to yeah, know. Like, or or, or I'm gonna have to deal with our uh, our mod. Be like I don't know. Damn it. <laughs> Get the cord. Revive his candy ass. <laughs> tell me the code. What 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 are you talking about? What happened? You saved my life, Joe. I just need the code. Give me the code. I just need the code. Just need the yes. code, the passwords yeah. and everything. All you want yeah. is the passwords, Joe. Are you some kind of terror? Are you kind of a hacker? No. So, I have a question for, for Joe and Geek. Since this is your all 300 episode, 300th episode, what has been, you guys have a favorite guest? Ooh. Yeah, Miss Bubbles. Of course, you know oh, what? It's Brox. It's Brox and Bobby Blaze right here. But right let's now, hit, it's this. Let's hit the bricks, bud. Come on. This, this, <laughs> this, you know, it's 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 something because it's well, hard to say. About time she got over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, but it, no, no. It, what excited me most to getting you guys back, it's just like hearing the stories from – Bobby Blaze and getting a chance to see Sour Bubbles again, get a chance to hang out with Brock because it's something because it's independent wrestling. That's all I'm going to say. It's independent wrestling that doing this with Geek, we always talked about wrestling and going to the shows, but we never had a chance to actually sit and chat for like an hour or like. 30 minutes to wrestlers because they were always so busy and now we have this and it's just like wow people are sending us stickers 
T-shirts. Like, yeah. And I know a few people that's been on your show I won't bring up, but I, I, I have seen these two. I didn't see the one with Brox and Troy, but I've seen a couple of y- other, other young ladies that you've had on the show. That's great, man. And, um, uh, again, that's the thing I'm, I'm saying about, you know, support women wrestling, support indie wrestling. Um, you get them exposed, you know, and I don't mean that bad. I'm just saying, like, there's people I know personally. I don't know why the fuck they're laughing, but <laughs> I'm not here to bury one. I'm just saying I have watched a few segments, and, and I, I'm, I appreciate what you're doing for independent wrestling and, 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 and independent women wrestling. And I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, where a few people do get those uh, extra work and dark matches and, and, and work up, and you're going like, oh, I remember that person win. And that's what it's all about. Like when you're on someone early on and you like them, and you're like, I'm going to see this person. I want to see them succeed. I want to see them do their best. Um, to me, I just I remember Pete in professional wrestling, as a fan, I'd, I'd see people and I'm like, oh man, this guy's got a lot of talent. I can't wait. And then I'd see him on NWA and I'm like, oh shit. And I'm not cu- current NWA. I'm the old school. Then I'm watching someone from a territory like Memphis that I grew up on. I'm like, oh fuck, they made it to WWF back then. You know, so I, that to me was like, I saw him in person. I saw him in magazines and they was doing this little local continental or local um, ICW, which was the Popo zone, Randy Savage, Lane, Lanny Popo, et cetera or the old Memphis style and had an uncle in Baltimore and he was like, Oh, that skinny champion down there, you know, and he'd, he'd buried a macho man, but he'd talk about that fucking, uh, Jerry, the King Lawler, who ever heard him. And then to live and see them guys make it to WWF and WWE and become big stars. And that guy, I go, yeah, motherfuckers. I saw them win. And that's the thing about helping these young people out and training and, and getting to know some of these young up and coming rising stars, uh, you're like, I knew them when. And that's what's happened to your show. You're gonna say, I knew this girl. Uh, I saw your 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 promo at the beginning, your your opening bumper, a lot of girls on there and stuff. And you're gonna say, Man, we had that chick on a show, we had that guy on a show, and look at them now, you know. And that that yeah. to me is so cool. As long as they don't forget where they come from. Yeah, exactly. like that, yeah. you know. Exactly. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, but to, to be fair though. Bobby, one of Bobby's biggest advices that he's ever given, a, one of the biggest pieces of advice he's given us is when when Vince signs you, yeah. he gets every fucking thing I've told you. Yeah, you get everything please. I've told you, do whatever Vince says. That's what he <laughs> says. Oh, fucking shut whatever. up, sign the fucking check, forget whatever the fuck I told you. I learned that from Rip Rogers. Uh, and he's had like 54 fucking people make it to WWE or whatever. Yeah, forget everything I fucking told you, sign your goddamn contract, Collect your money and do what the fuck you're told, and that's that. Yeah, that's it. Pretty much. And, that's um, it. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And that's Guys, it's like, could you imagine being with this guy every week, twice a oh week? Oh God, it's the it's the best, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. We get Bobby Blaze stories all the time. It's, all that's the time. like geek. We'd be like, geek. Is there enough room on your phone service? Do you, would you get any more stories? Like. Keep keep well, keep following him. Keep follow the, yeah, keep pushing the record button, Geek. Keep pushing keep the talking. record button. <laughs> Only something. But whatever man. you all you want. You want to? I think you all wanted to ask me about Dean Malenko earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. go on. Talk yeah. about Dean. I just I'll bring it up. Well, luckily, unfortunately for me, um, Sarah and um, uh, Rocks, we got to see Dean a few weeks ago. I, I don't know when it was. Three weeks ago, four weeks. I don't know. My mind. I don't think too. It's there it a, it last month, or it was a replacement, and they got to come to town. Arn Anderson, and Dean, come to town. I was so pumped that I got to see Dean. Cause I hadn't seen Dean before, uh, for a couple, not before, before a, uh, a hot minute. I've talked to Arn in the last year and saw him in person, but Dean and I go back a long way. And I was training in Tampa, Florida, with Professor Boris Malenko, Dean's dad, and, and Dean has an older brother, Joe Malenko, who trained with the great Carl Gotch, and they do the shoot fighting and this and that. And I'd been on tour with Joe Malenko and, and Dean Malenko over in Australia. And uh, they used to just sometimes I get to stick around when I was getting ready to go to a tour in Japan. And Malenko, the, the coach, my mentor, my trainer, he said, Bobby, you and Rico care to stick around and work with my boys some. Uh, they get ready to go to Japan. I'm like, fucking, I'm honored. I wouldn't say it that way, but I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Miss Malenko, whatever, you know. And they'd get in and do this and do that. And I'd learn. I'd learn a tackle on this side. How do you do it? 
because you're doing this, this, and this. And they're going, here's the right way. And, and they're the best craftsmen in the business, bar none. So after about four months, uh, uh, Larry, or Professor Malenko, he was uh, started having a couple of little health problems. And, and um, my, myself and another guy named Rico Federico, uh, we were like getting really advanced, kind of like these two are in classes. And, and I say it humbly and respectfully uh, because they are. And you're like, um, so Dean's will come back because he's been over to Japan quite a bit. And he goes, uh, my son's going to come in and work with you too. And I'm like, oh my God. Because I've seen Dean work. They had VHSs from uh, Japan at the time. And I'm like, oh fuck, why this guy on TV in the United States? Because he had a big contract in Japan at the time. So when Dean came back and started training myself and another gentleman personally and professionally, I mean, I got to get in a ring with Dean and do this and do that. And, um, Dean and I, and we, we traveled, we have TVs in, in Sarasota before I was living in Tampa. We had TVs in Sarasota and we'd done all these independent shows and Dean would pick and select the, the shows he would do locally to help his dad out and help the promotion out, et cetera. And, um, we got real close, but that's his dad. And when I spoke to Dean a few weeks ago, uh, Dean and I spoke several times very quietly, uh, Publicly, we was here and this and that, and I, you know, waited for him to eat, and you know, real respectful. But Dean and I had this relationship, and and I'll go back to what we talked about just a couple weeks ago. I could, and I got to WCW, and I went to, to see Dean. I'd, I'd been to shows before in the back before I had my tryout, so I'd seen Dean and Eddie and Chris, and I knew all these guys. I traveled with them, been in Australia with them, been on independent shows with them in Florida, etc. But Dean and I, we developed this weird relationship. You'd be at an airport because you see someone enough, and you got this personal relationship with this one gentleman and maybe even his brother, et cetera, and that's his dad. And we'd be in an airport like, hey, Dean, man, I love you. Hey, Bobby, I love you. And Dean wasn't ever that loud, but, again, walking by like, and we'd be also to kind of, Fuck you. Hey, Bobby, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, Dean. And I, knew he meant, and I knew he meant I loved you. So we could be having a coffee going to different flights, me going to uh, Cincinnati, Charlotte, or or Pittsburgh, him getting somewhere to back to, to Tampa so I come back to different airports. We're passing. Oh, fuck you, Dean. Well, fuck you, Bobby. Or fuck you, Bobby. <laughs> and I'm like, I love you too, Dean. You know, because we had this, we had this unique relationship. And I never, and we get to the building, and they go, man, you got heat with Dean? Like, are you fucking kidding? I, there, if I ever have heat with Dean, me and you's got a problem if you don't get where I'm going. Can we get to the locker room, and we just saw each other two or three nights ago, like, give each other a hug. I love you, man. Good seeing you. Yeah, I passed you the other day. Yeah, fuck yeah. Whatever. So um, that was kind of where it was at. Very respectful. So when I saw Dean a few weeks ago when he made an appearance here, um, uh, Dean, I well back to WCW. I went that night and I said, you know, here's what they're offering. And I was in Charlotte for a tryout. Terry Taylor brought me in, and uh, Paul, uh, Paul Orndorff, and Kevin Sullivan had already talked to me about a job before I even got hired there. So it's all these negotiations and this and that and this business. Like Arn said, and I tell these two, we're just two gentlemen discussing business. When I first night I come to WCW, I didn't have a contract, and that's what Arn told me. And I told him it's down to Time Warp. Big shout out to Time Warp as well, guys. Just so you know, it's one of our sponsors. Mm. Um, and Arn said, "Well, why wouldn't I be nice to you, Bobby? We was just brothers. We were professionals that night, you know." And I was like, "Yeah, exactly." So he get you know people get it. But back to Dean, I went to him and I said, "This is what they're offering." And this me, he goes, "How many dates?" And I told him, he goes, "Bobby, how much you making now?" I told him. It was respectable on the independent scene. Smoky Mountain just filled, just finished up, but I was on TV and going to Japan. Uh, so anyway, I had I was making money, but 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 not what that WCW is not Ted Turner money. Mm. And he goes, Bobby, what would Dad say? I turned around. I said, Fuck! I went right to Terry Taylor. I said, Terry, where's the contract? What do I got to do? And he told me, you know, do this, this, and this, and I'll see you in an hour. Like, okay. So I, I had enough respect for Dean to even ask him. And I also went to Sean Waltman, who's a Malenko student as well. And so, and yeah, when Dean and I saw each other a few weeks ago and uh, uh, we spoke under our breath and talked and this and that. And when he talked, I, but 
we started talking, we both about teared up. We kind of just ended it there at one point about he'd been there and the line died down a little bit. And I was like, you know, hey, Dean. And I said, man, I just want to tell you, I get it. And I want to say thank you for sharing your dad with me. Because I stayed there some, you know, and Dean was already off on his own. He was a young adult. I'm a young adult. There's a couple years different between our ages. We won't get into that. And, and, and Malenko is close to my age now, give or take a couple years, just saying. And, like, we shared that person. And I said, but, you know, and I mentioned a couple other guys. I won't go into detail here. And I said, but he was like a father figure to so many others as well. And I always appreciate and respected how you handled that. Because at one time, you may not have handled it the best. Because you're sharing your dad with all these fans. And then you're sharing your dad with all these guys he's trained. And, and you know, that's, there's, a, it get, and we both just, we both like, and we just, we like, k faved. We, we shut it down. And I said, yeah, Dean. And we just changed the whole fucking subject. Because we started getting a little bit deep. But we had that connection once again. I hugged him. Told him I loved him. He loved me, whatever. And I said, you know, hey, the line's coming. I'll see you in a few minutes. And I just went back and sat down. But we shared that moment. And and I and I don't forget those things. I cherish them, you know. Uh, but Dean taught me so much. Uh, try this, try that. Watch this, watch that. Pick out. Get you to where you can do 12 to 15 things and do them really fucking good. Take those 12 to 15 things. Get about 8 to 10. Do this. And then get you five get you three and be an expert at those and make those get in that match and make, and I tell these folks here that get those things in, get your shit into that match. And if I get them in and if bubbles gets hers in or I get them in and Brock gets his, in, that six, eight, nine things. And it makes up the whole match. The rest of it can be walk and talk. Here's your finish. Here's your start. Here's your finish. Let's go. And the fans appreciate it respect it and hopefully they tell two friends they tell two friends and show on and so on and so on and they make it even more people at the next show because they bought into well fuck did you see that finish he was out there bad mouthing ftc then the owner and then our trainer and then what the fuck our trainer comes out and beats him what boom that's what you work for and all those yeah. things i learned from dean and, and old school wrestling and just being an old fuck myself, if you will. But, um, yeah. So training under Dean, how can I lot learn to be and, and, and do some of the stuff I used to be able to do. And I could do a lot of stuff. That's not bragging. Again, I'll go back to not the toot my own horn, but toot toot, you know, thank you, toot, buddy. Toot. How much did I learn from buddy? How much have I learned from Arn? How much have I learned from Cornette? How much have I learned from, from, uh, uh, Dean Malenko? Here's my rant is this. I would, this is the way I felt, especially after COVID, when COVID is going on, rather. Uh, I looked at, I looked at my couch and I looked at my chair and I said, there's nothing going on on that couch. There's nothing going on this chair. When this thing unlocks or we get it, back, get the fuck back out, I'm giving to and giving back to something I love. And that's professional wrestling. And I've always been a big believer in pay it forward. And I said, I'm paying it forward through professional wrestling, had these opportunities to do so. So with that said, I said to myself, it would be a disservice to have all this knowledge from all these people I've learned from, Malenko, Cornette, et cetera, you know, and have all this world travel, Australia, Japan, England, South Africa, et cetera, um, Canada, U.S. If I'm sitting here, if I don't share that, not only am I doing a disservice to someone that wants to learn our craft, learn our business and our serious and, want, and, and wants to put the time and effort. Because I tell these folks, no one's twisting your arm, no pun intended. No one's smacking your ass, telling you, you have to go here. They go because they want to. They have a love and a passion for something I do that we have in common. That's professional wrestling. So I said to myself, not only would I be a disservice to anyone that wants to learn our craft or learn our business, I'd be doing a disservice to myself to have this knowledge. It'd be like having that candle in the middle of the room and letting it shine or putting a fucking cup over it. I don't want a cup over my candle. I want that motherfucker to shine. And back in the day, and I probably still do it, and I'm probably getting too old to do it. And this is old, just letting you know. Some people say, you light your candle and you got that one little wick and it's burning. 
And some people say, man, you're burning your candle at both ends. Both ends of that candle. You know what I do? I take a flamethrower to that motherfucker. Whoo! And I fucking live. <laughs> yeah. Help that motherfucker down and live and give back to something I love. Yeah. Well, how's that? That's love great. It. Definitely. <laughs> That's great. Some of that may be stolen material. <laughs> but oh, creative you know. liberties, creative liberties have been taken. Yeah. I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear nothing. Yeah. I didn't hear nothing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. what do you hear? What do you say? What do you hear? What do you say? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's Bobby really, Blaze made it up. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's really cool to hear. It's cool to hear those Bobby stories. From me personally, because like I, I've always told people like what Bobby teaches is the the old school and the sprinkles and the why of wrestling. Like it needs to make sense. There's no reason to get in there and have high spot matches. You got it's got to make sense. You got to tell the story. You got to you got to you got to pull the people in, right? So to hear to hear Bobby talk about how he's worked with Dean and, and Dean's dad and, and Rip and all these people, and then that, he he puts all that into us, right? And then the people that we've got to work with too since we started the business. Like we've had Melina come in and do a seminar with us. We've had Gangrel come in and do seminars. Scotty Too Hotty. Um, uh, I don't know who else we've had. We've had we, uh, Mark, uh, uh, bag on it. Your what's the girl's name, Bobby? Shane and like? Tommy and uh, Tommy, yeah, Tommy, 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 yeah, Tommy Wildfire Rich and Shane Douglas has been with us. Yep. Wow. Um, I was talking about Mark Hawk. Mark, Mark no, I know, I know you said girl, I like don't be fucking K Pay. <laughs> God damn, I'm still trying to get laid. Uh, but anyways, anyways, no, but you know, and then of course, like I said, I've, 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 I've always mentioned, uh, I've always I mentioned, know Dylan. Name. <laughs> I've always mentioned, Dylan. uh, Didn't you ever Kishi? Dylan huh? Didn't you ever Kishi? I remember the time you said, yeah, we had, yeah, we, yeah, Rikishi, we was on a show with Rikishi and, and stuff like that. And, and, and for this, this past show we had where Bobby won the title, um, Devon Dudley was there. Oh, Devon, as, oh, yeah. as a replacement. Class all the hurricanes. The yeah. What a great Class. guy. He's doing better at least. I'm glad. I'm so glad but, he's doing uh, better. He was, yes. he was able to come in with all the hurricanes and stuff. Some people canceled. But uh special moment for me, me and, and Titan Troy, who's uh, a partner in Grappling Inc. now. Uh, another guy that you guys needed to really watch. Phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. wrestler. Um Really, he carries the team, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> but uh, mm. he, uh, he was, we were just showing him some things we do. Is it coming for your belts too? Uh, it, it, he's, he's tried a couple times already, man. You know what I'm saying? He's my boy. He's my boy, but it is what it is. Um, but we were showing Devon uh, just some things we do uh, in, in a tag team match, just together. You know, some of our, our tag things we do together. And ge total geeking out moment for me. Devon says, "Can I give you a pointer? Uh, yeah, the ring on your finger, and the, and the many times you've been a tag team champion, and all over the place." You get, yeah, go ahead, dude. It's cool. Give me a pointer, please. Give me a pointer on something to do with a tag team match, you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we got we got you know he gave us a few pointers on something we do in a, in a match, and and we actually I didn't have a tag match that night, but the way it worked out, he was he came out in the match, and we actually got to do that thing we showed Devon with. It's it's a monkey flip uh, senton is what we do. Mm. It's, uh, it's very cool. It's uh, I start in the corner, cool. he flip he monkey flips me into a senton on top of someone. Oh geez, super wow. simple. But super cool, you know. And uh, he gave us a pointer into it, and we done it that night. And when I when I rolled up, and he and I are standing next to each each other in the ring, I looked at him. I said, "That Devon guy knows what the hell he's talking about." <laughs> and Troy really laughed real hard. He said, hey, "I think so." But that it all goes back. It's it's all that stuff. I mean, you know, we're getting stuff that Bobby was taught. Um, he said last night, "I won't teach you everything that I know, but I'll teach you everything that you know." So we're getting all that stuff that Bobby teaches us, or and that that he got from the people he was trained by, and the people we've got to meet. Along the way, it, it, and here at FTC and the Art of Grappling, we're really fortunate to have the people we've had. Um, pure professionals across the board. And there's not a lot of schools you can go to and say, uh, you know, I've had, I've got to talk and be in a ring with, you know, Jillian Hall, Bobby Blaze, Gang Grill, you know, Eric, we had Eric Redbeard here one time, Rikishi, Scotty Tuhati, Melina, Tommy Wildfire. That's a list, and that's just a few names. Like, if I sit and thought about it for a minute, you know, we've had Tony Atlas here. We've had uh, Cowboy Bob Orton has, has been here to do some signings and talk to us. Kane has been here, wow. done a signing here with us locally. We have been really fortunate um, to have who we have here, uh, thanks to FTC's owner Joe Pace and, and yeah. Tom Warp, our biggest our, our main sponsor, yeah. Earl over at Tom Warp. But um, 
man, it's just it's 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 all it, is what's made FTC and the art of grappling what we are is is yeah. the beginnings with with just Jillian and then when Bobby came around after he got done talking to his couch and his chair yeah. after he got done talking to those guys and he and he came back in and then they worked together for a long time and then you know she got too cold and moved back to Florida which. All love for Jillian. No, no, I love Jillian to death. Um, Jillian, you're a nice person. You're I love you. She's awesome. We heard a lot I of good you. stuff about her. We heard, really Listen, heard a lot of things. I, I, I joke with some of the new students that we have. I tell them, um, you're lucky you have this version of Bobby because I've heard stories about how Bobby used to train. <laughs> uh, and they're lucky they have this version of Bobby, but some of the new students we have wouldn't survive Jillian Hall. No, geez. Like, as as much as I love her, and as much as she's put into my career to make me what I am, um, and again, nothing against you, Bobby. You know that we've no. had a conversation. Uh, Jillian's a main a main component of what I am. Um, and I'll say this, Bobby. and this before she left, and I and, and again, it just got too cold up here. She decided to go back to Florida. It is what it is. Whatever. There's no heat between Jillian and myself. Nothing but respect there, personally and professionally. Oh, but I I told her. Uh, be, and, and, and Sarah, maybe you had just started. Uh, you'd been there a little while. Uh, and and I, some of the older, the other students had been there since December because I didn't come in until March. I knew I was coming in. I just didn't know when because my ass was glued to the chair and COVID was going on. And the couch kept speaking to me, like you said, <laughs> whatever. Um, I told her after a few weeks, uh, I said, I just hope you know how much each of these students care for you and respect you. And she questioned me. She goes, really? And I go, yeah, they do. I said, I can tell how much they love, respect you, they care for you. And she goes, I was just wondering yeah. if I was doing things right. And I go, well, well, you have. And the thing about that is, and I'll say this, and I'm not here trying to, you know, kiss up the one, brag the one, toot their fucking horn. I'm just saying, when I when I told her that, and she took it, um, and I meant it, and I see what she done with some of those earlier students. She done a fucking tremendous job. And I have to say, man, she got a lot out of people. And I respect that, the way she trained each and every one of you all. Um, so right. there's there's no uh, heat there. I'm not mm-hmm. saying to suck up that stuff I've told her to her face. And um, I'm the kind of guy, and I think you all know this, more likely I won't say it if I have to bite my tongue. But if I fucking have to say something, it's because I mean it. You know, and um, I'm not saying it to waste fucking words or whatever. I'm saying it. I don't put the F's in there for shock value. It's just the way I talk. But uh, she done a tremendous job with you guys, you know, and, and I appreciate and respect that uh, to this yeah. day because I see I see that still. But also I have to agree. There are several people that probably wouldn't survive <laughs> way back then. And with me, when I used to be a little bit different than I am now, maybe mellowed with age, if you will. Um no, I don't know. I'm still probably a badass trainer. Sometimes when I say, you motherfucker, then I'll say, okay, I called you that because you have to get this. Yeah. Get in the ring. Get back in here. Don't you fucking quit. You know, get in here and I push you. But 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 it has changed over time. But that, that becomes with the passion for the business because yeah. I want to see people do good with this business. And I want to hopefully see people succeed in this business and one day someone will say you know hey man um i love this business i want to pay it forward i want to give back to and that's what i'm doing that's all i'm doing man and like i said i'm just trying to outlive a few more people including myself mm-hmm. and it's the one thing in my life that i've always loved and cared for and i tell these people dudes at ringside congratulations number 300 i just want to say Boom, boom, boom. But I tell them this, and I mean it sincerely. And I just told someone this non-wrestling related. I want to say it was yesterday, but it could have been fucking two days ago. Who knows? I'm just saying I've said this. Uh, I I said on that podcast with Dave Lucas, uh, if you saw that for Ohio over there, uh, OU, whatever. Um, As much as Brock's and Bubbles and the rest of the students think – that I give them, I get back so much more. I get back when I, and I'm I'm sincere in saying this, and I take great pride in saying this, I get back more than what I give. 
and I give a hundred fucking percent and I give every goddamn thing I got. So when I say I get more back from giving, it's 100% fucking true, man. And everything I've got in this world is because I've taken one hand and I reached out and helped someone else. And someone else has taken another hand. They reached out and helped me and I've paid it forward where I've said, thank you. Um, and, uh, it's a brotherhood, sisterhood. It's the union. Uh, I know there's no union wrestling. It's a union of love and passion for professional wrestling. And everything I've given, I've gotten back and then some. And that, to me, is the best feeling ever. Whether it's walking out in the curtains and the fans are coming down on you, you're on a fucking pay-per-view, or you're live, or you're doing a podcast. Sometimes you just come home and you got a pizza and a soda, or a pizza and a beer, or a slice and a beer, and you're going, man, tonight, this is what it's all about. I saw those people bust their ass in the ring, or I went to a show, and we've ridden to a show together before uh, with both of these young folks here, and I got them in a goddamn parade. They'll be thankful for that. That's a whole different story. But uh, anyway, uh, anyway, just saying, they've ridden, we've ridden the same car, and you're like, you come home at night, it's just you, your TV, your couch, your chair, whatever. You're going, man, today was a good fucking day. I saw them go out there and have a fucking killer match. And this match was good. This match was good. This match was great. This match was phenomenal. And it fucking made a great show. And you come home and go, man, I give back to that gladly every fucking day. I stepped three or four jacked up like, ah, what a fucking show. You know, and I that's to me, I get more out of it. I probably need more sleep because <laughs> I'm so jacked up afterwards. But that's what I'm saying. When you give something away like that, you don't lose anything. You can give away love. You don't lose anything. You get it back. You know what I'm saying? You can give away yeah. uh, fucking kindness. It doesn't take you. Bobby Eaton was one of the person that told me it's way back in the 1998, and I've known Bobby since 1988. Wow. One of the greatest guys in professional wrestling. He won the first professional wrestling I met. And, and he's, we was in Canada together shooting a sports video for, for EA Sports. And he goes, man, it doesn't take anything to be nice to people. And my whole mentality changed the moment he told me at a restaurant one night. And I was like, why the fuck you been to this guy? And this guy? He goes, it doesn't take anything, Bobby, to be nice to someone. And I was like, oh, shit. And it's true. So you got love, kindness. You give those away, you gain from them. You don't give it away and not get it back. Gratitude, you know. Today, my and I choose these different things every day. It's kind of weird. But today on my list was gratitude. That's what I chose. I still have love and kindness and uh, uh, acceptance, forgiveness, whatever. But gratitude was on my list. That was my thing today. And I was like, you think I'm not thankful I have a roof over my head or a bed to sleep in or this and that food to eat, whatever it is. For this podcast, for these people here, their kindness, that's what it's about. You can give away, but you get back. And I don't ever go out there going, if I give this away, I'll get this back. If I give that guy, no, the world don't work like that. What the world works like is you give and don't give till it fucking hurts. Give till it fucking helps. And you've done something. That's like that. that. There you go. There you so go. I don't know. I don't know how much time you guys got, but I, yeah. I do. I do have one more great Bobby Blaze story. Okay. Uh, all right. We, we could, we could, all right. We can do it. Go ahead. Okay. So, well, I talked about Bobby being a different type of trainer than Jillian and a lot of the new guys would survive Jillian. She was a lot more rough than Bobby was. But the greatest thing that Bobby Blaze has ever done for me is kick me out of the fucking ring one night. So <laughs> Bobby hadn't been with AOG uh, from the COVID stuff very long. And uh, and he knows. We've talked about it. We, we sure. Actually, this is what started this, this whole love affair for me from Bobby Blaze anyways. But so nothing but, he, nothing but respect. He had said something. He said something in the ring to the effect of, you know, I'll, I'll give you guys credit when you earn it. And I made the comment to myself uh, because Bobby didn't really understand me at the time. I'm, I am my hardest critic. Everybody that's in this room that's on this side that knows me knows that I'm my hardest critic. I, I'm harder on me than anybody else could ever be. And uh, so Bobby made the comment, you know, I'll give you guys credit when you earn it or when you get it, when you, when you, you know, do something to get it. And I said, well, I guess I'll never get it then. Talking about me, because I was frustrated that night about something uh, I wasn't doing right in the ring. And I guess and he, I guess he had heard something different or thought that I was talking about him opposed to myself. 
and you know we kind of butted heads like we like you know like men do. Uh, and we were both not, athletes because I know you played yeah. softball and basketball, and I expected yeah. more from you. That was the other thing I had respect yeah. for you as an athlete. Right. So and, and anyway, go and ahead. The, the testosterone, you know, it's a testosterone yeah. filled sport. We yeah. butted. Yeah. So a few minutes later, I'm in the ring, and he's showing me how to do a move, and I questioned it, which, you know, Bobby's cool with you questioning anything. He's okay with talking anything out, um, but on that night, especially with me. He was just like this motherfucker's question, and Bobby Blaze, you know. <laughs> and now, to, and to, to his to his defense, if we're in the ring, and a new student says something and questions Bobby, Bobby don't really have much time to say anything to him because I'm normally like, shut the fuck up, Bobby Blaze <laughs> yeah. talking. You know, you don't talk to Bobby Blaze like it's me that's on him now. Yeah. But I was Thank that you. guy, and because I was a Jillian guy, you know, Bobby had been there just a few weeks, and I was I was on Team Jillian because yeah. that's how I seen it. Or not really seen it, but that's just I, Jillian started with me, so I was kind of you know on Jillian there, and I didn't know much about Bobby to be honest with you. So he said, "You know what? Get the fuck out of the ring." <laughs> I said, "What?" He said, "Get the fuck out of the ring." I said, "All right, motherfucker, I'll get out of the ring." I rode out of the ring, and I was madder than hell, and I was like, "Fuck this, fuck that," and I was mad, you know. And I said, "During I stayed mad for the longest time. I don't think I got back in the ring that night uh, because I was told to get the fuck out." So I was like, "All right, fuck, I'm out." So he walk, you know, everybody's done for the night. He's walking out, and I, I'm like, you know what? I ain't gonna go down like this. I followed him out the door, and I, I said, Bobby, let's talk about this for a minute. Let's mean you understand each other real quick, or whatever it was. And he said, let's do that. We're goddamn men. Let's do it. And, yeah. and we sat there, and I won't tell you everything that was said, and it doesn't mm. really matter. But we had a man to man conversation, yeah. and to this day, I will tell you the best thing that's ever happened in my career has revolved around Bobby Blaze. It's because he kicked me out of the ring and gave me a check on my attitude or whatever it was that night or the misunderstanding, whatever it started sure. with. But it, he gave me, he, he kicked me out of the ring and he let me sit down. He let me track him down and talk to him yeah. because he seen the passion. He seen the fact that I wanted to learn something and he didn't understand me and I didn't understand him. Yeah. But that night we got the understanding. We got the understanding yeah. And then the respect came over the next two years. Yeah. Of, of old, I thought Anthony was saying one thing to Jillian and one thing to me or whatever. And, and, and Brock's, I just, what I was getting at, but he was, I didn't realize he had already spoken to Jillian about something. He was being hard on himself. It wasn't towards me. It wasn't disrespectful to me. He was just speaking out. I'm like, well, fuck man. I'm just trying to help you here. But that happened. <laughs> and so he was his toughest critic. And then the other thing was this, and, and this is true in bubbles. You can attest to this. Um, I don't, I could, I told Anthony and Brock's this, and that's, that's the art of communication or trying to get everyone together on the same page or what I can't at the time. And, and you can figure out the names or whatever. I'm not going to drop names. I can't speak to you like I do an 18 year old fucking cheerleader, just out of high school. I can't speak to you like a 25 year old. Cause I have a son fucking 25 year old. I can speak to you. You're a grown ass man. And I knew he had played sports and I respected that. They still was out there playing softball and basketball and, and those things and learning this craft. And I said, so how I'm talking to you is like a grown ass man. You're, 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 you're 29 and I'm 39 now just bullshit. But anyway, saying, I can't, how can I talk to a 29 year old man like I do a 19 year old girl? You know, say you can't because that 19 year old girl, she's still back there fucking cheerleading. This girl's mm -hmm. still doing this. That guy's still doing this. This guy's never lived outside of his mama's basement. But this is a grown ass man that's fucking <laughs> grown, has a career, and, and still plays these sports and is very athletic. So when I saw that, I, I'm speaking to him from that perspective. So once we decided that, uh, and I'm not kissing his ass. He's not kissing mine. I'm just saying it's life. And that's when, and, and, and I don't talk to Sarah the same way I talk to other people because I respect her. When she started talking those interviews, we was talking off the air. I said, damn, this girl gets her. Give her these fucking bullet points. She's going to take it away. Boom, boom, boom. So now she understands the art of an interview or a promo, et cetera. And, and back to, to Brock's there. Once she understood like, yeah, we're grown ass fucking men. You, you're only talking to me to what that's the way you should talk to me. And, I, and I'm like, listen to him going, well, now I know it wasn't towards me. Cause you're being your own harshest critic. At least you see the athletic ability you have 
you see you can do this. It was a misunderstanding. We got it all straightened out. There's nothing but love and respect now. But, you know, it, it's, it's how you talk to, speak to, communicate with other people. That's what had happened. I saw more. I expected more. And that's what happened. And now we have more. Um, he, he's so respected. Both of these folks are so respected in our locker room. Um, they've learned so much about professional wrestling and also about teaching and coaching because they both are teachers and coaches. Uh, and I see it and I hear it and I see the people grab weight, gra gravitating to them. Um, that sometimes I, I think motherfucker, if you knew, but when I start to say something, Anthony's already turning her ass like shut the fuck up and sit down or Sarah's like, you got two ears, one mouth, sit down. And I'm like, oh, thank you, because I don't have time for that, because I've already been through that. I've been through it years ago. Now I'm going through it again. But at least I got two people that go, hold on, I got this, Bobby. I'm like, whew, thank you. <laughs> but it's I, true. That, that, that's the way it happens, you know. Um, and and I, I know we're getting close on time, whatever. If you want one more good story or whatever, Anthony or Brox, thank you for sharing that with me. k oh, broken. Yeah, bro hey, I'll break the fourth fucking wall. You know what I'm saying? But hey. <laughs> That's why I did this. Um, yeah. That's why I did this. Yeah. So there like, you go, oh, no. uh, Whatever. Just say it. Yeah. Rock, oh, no. Sometimes, sometimes Joe breaks the kayfabe and calls me by my real name. So it's if like, you Joe, watch what the hell are you doing? First, first the episode, episode I used to call the L word. You the fuck you want at your episode. Congratulations on 300, you know. Sarah, <laughs> please be quiet over there, would you? God <laughs> damn. I can't get a word in. I can't. I've, I've been trying all night, boys. I've been trying all night. Well, it's kind of funny, Sarah. Like, I was at work and I was like, yeah, we're going to have Sarah on this episode. And what song comes on in my freaking store? And I told my guy, the guy I work with, and he's like, "Oh, geez, you're an '80s boy." I'm like, "She does. She wasn't even raised in the '80s." But the song Sarah came on. I was and like, fucking yeah. Hall knows had to fucking come on probably or something. What yes, the song Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like what? the radio she, song. She was just barely born in the '80s, wasn't she? Yes. I was born in the '80s, Brox. You shut your mouth. I was not born in the '80s. I said you were just barely born in the '80s. I wasn't sure. I don't know. I was that, not. That sour song came on, and that day when we first got her on the podcast, I'm like, I gotta find a freaking song because I'm Mr. DJ. Who was, it? was it? Was it? Was it Hall? No, who sang that? Was Hall? Yeah, it was. Who's, no, it was radio. No, who, I think it's no. a radio or something who like the, that. Commodores. Who the fuck sang it? I don't know. All I know. Man. All I know Look is it up. that. Let song, us know, Sarah. Look it up. All I know I'm is that song. Else. And I. I used to get teased because that song when I was a little boy because it was a girl I really <laughs> liked named Sarah. My thought tongue come on, and my mom's like, Randy, it's that song. It's your song with her. Like, oh, oh, who, who the fuck's Randy? Who's Randy? Huh? Who's Randy? We don't need to practice, Joe, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would get teased. Like, leave me alone, Sarah. Who was it, Sarah? Is it Jefferson Starship? I think it's Jefferson. Uh, is it? Miracle is one of my favorite songs by them. Yeah, but I, if I gotta remember the name of the band, but it was oh, like Sarah. Was that from like nineteen eighty? No, yes, Jane. I'm thinking Jane from Jeffrey Starship. I'm not gonna sing it because I don't want to hit by a copyright. It's like so. <laughs> we, 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 don't worry, Joe. I think we've been hit by copyright strikes before. We'll that that it won't out. be. Uh, we'll Instagram it hates out. me by now. They're like this little <laughs> freaking idiot keeps putting songs. You know you can't. That's gimmick infringement, you fuckers. We, we got a freaking copyright strike from last March, and we're like, what? Uh, it's just Meta took over Instagram. They're like. Oh, huh. you're the motherfuckers that keep using all these songs. <laughs> Your ass is getting an email, bitch. Cease and cease, you know. Hit, hit, hit you with the Chris Rock, like, <laughs> you're going to fuck around, you're going to find out. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. And the more you fuck around, the more you find out. Yeah. yeah <laughs> what more emails you'll get. And yeah. I get the emails. Geek doesn't get the emails. I'm like, oh, oh. I get the emails. I get the emails but on the YouTube side. Oh, okay. Like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I think it's crazy that Brox and I are 10 years apart. 10 years. Like, that's easy math. Math is hard, but that's easy math. He still can't remember what year I was born. Uh, I, for the record, Brox doesn't care. Yeah. I know. I know. Hey. Not even a little bit. I know he he the heel. I, listen, uh -huh. the little people uh -huh. sometimes matter. Not me, not all of them. It is what it is. We, we're listen, us little people. Do you're that. a little person, too, Brox. I just hey, meant like man. the little people in life, not in people stature. in glass houses should not throw stones. So yeah. I listen, it, it, it's not, it's not a stature thing. It's a, 
Mom, dad, they, fighting uh, Joe. <laughs> what? Mom and dad are fighting again. <laughs> yeah, mom and dad. I hate it when mom and dad fight. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I got later on. Real fight, not the one you tell everyone. So that, that's later how, on. That's yeah. how it happens around here when when me, and, when me and Bubbles are into it. People are like, mom and dad are fighting and we don't like it. Because we, we have a student. We do have a student that calls Bubbles mom. Shut up. Like, don't even. Oh, my gosh. Is that uh, a I'm creepy? not going to say who it is. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying there's Is that a creepy thing here. he calls her mom? Or is he it like, calls uh, her mom. And it's, it's, it's not... It's it's oh, not in that way. Oh. Wait, stop. Uh, uh, stop. Joe, what did you say? Is is it like do you not like you could tell them you don't like being called that? That's like, I could, but he won't understand that. Yeah. Oh, is, is he like you know <laughs> when we, we'll talk about it later, Joe. Okay, no, no, I'm just saying I don't I don't want to sound like I'm being mean, you know. We'll talk about You're it not. Later. We can cut this part out. Yeah, we will. <laughs> we Editing. Thank goodness it's not live. We, we, we can. Yeah. Get, we, get that get that Randy guy to cut this out. Yeah. Randy. Randy. I, I, I'll beat that guy's ass later. He's he's, he's, he's annoying. <laughs> Wait, we can cut uh, this part out? <laughs> yeah, he can. Yeah, Don't worry about it. We're good. Maybe Lance can do it. Yeah, that guy Lance. Who's, La who's Lance? He's that slave that sits behind the computer <laughs> and Joe's just like, oh, let's make an, make an episode. Yeah. Hey, girly, what up? <laughs> Bob's send done, in, man. Send He's in like, I'm dead, dead at Orioles. Past our school. bedtime. Yeah, send yeah, send in, send a uh, send in dead pictures of Orioles to show Pony. She's blocking Joe. You you jerk. Yeah. Man, jerk. Y'all y'all leave her alone, man. She's a good no. girl. <laughs> no, I will not. I will not. You want to see something real special? What so Watch funny is Boy that was none of that was intentional. Match. It just happened. We should have. Oh my God! Another match. You two need to get you and show. I'm talking like I'm talking in my camera, but I'm looking away. You guys need to do like a three stages of hell match. You and uh, you and her. You should need to. I have no idea what that is. Three stages of hell. That two or three falls. Two or three, three falls. falls. But it, you can make different stipulations every every fall. Yeah, every match is different. So like yeah. the first yeah. match would be tables, ladders, and chairs, and then the second match would be. Um, you know, just a, a ladder match itself, or you know, what I'm saying you just do something. You just start to you just start get to them bitches match. in a cage. Yeah, and the last <laughs> stage could be a cage match. Cage Boom. match, build up to the cage match. You know? Cage Hell match was yeah. the best part. And they both They're, would do very good at either. Look, Indian wrestling, wrestling cage matches are fine. awesome. Let's I like feel people. like this is less about wrestling and more about watching two blondes duke it out. <laughs> Maybe. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I have special pool with the promoter at FTC, so. You guys might just get your wish. I'm, I'm, I may try to make that happen. Hopefully it's on YouTube because I definitely – Hey, if you're ever looking for ask, any guest commentary, uh, Bobby. I don't do anything That's... but train people. Uh, I don't, have, always I don't, I don't know, know nothing. Okay. <laughs> As Bobby, I – they, they know. Say it. My answer is this. See the promoter. That's oh, right. Okay. okay. I don't fucking know. See the promoter. <laughs> talk to the, pro every, talk uh, to the promoter, Joe. That's what you gotta do. I, I get yelled at by shirt. Yeah. That's what we need. I need to do that. Yeah, get that shirt. So I think what one we should final do. story will go. You want me to go up that one final story? Go ahead, Brock. Sorry. I just say what we should do is put just a whole package together for him, uh, commemorating the three hundred. Put a shirt in for me and Bubbles and and uh, Bobby and the books. Maybe I'll, I'll cover the yeah. books if if anything. I got some stickers and. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll, we'll do, do some wall we'll right here. Get the address. We'll put together a package after yeah. Saturday, Anthony. We'll do that. Yeah, not Ooh, not yeah. the same kind of package that you're thinking about, Joe. Yeah. It, won't be, it won't be our dick in a box or nothing. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, be, so real quickly, a, a, where's that A restraining from? order from Sarah. From hey, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hell, I don't know. See the promoter. So here's a story. It's in the book. I told this person in. I told this person in person a story. So it goes back several years ago. I'm trying to break into the professional wrestling business. Jerry Lawler told me one time, uh, I was talking to him in Lexington at the Rupp Arena, and I, I, I was like, man, how you get into this business and this and that? And he just looked over nonchalantly. And he was going to wrestle Jesse the Body Ventura that night with the San Diego Chicken in his corner uh, and Jimmy Hart in the other corner with, with uh, the body. And, and so anyway, that's a whole different story. But basically, Lawler said, see the promoter, kid. It blew me off. No big deal. <laughs> but the second time it happened, real big deal. I'm at the Huntington Civic Coliseum or Huntington Civic Center, rather. And myself, my uncle, my brother are there. 
and it's getting ready to be intermission. We just watched the match, and we we, we kind of know. We're kind of smart, but we're not. And I hate to say smart, Mark, because we're not, because this is way before kayfabe was broken, blah, blah, blah. But we had an idea how a show ran. And so we said, that's probably intermission. So we get up and go right when they're saying it's intermission. We run back, and there's a table blocking where the wrestlers are at and where the fans can come to, and the concession stands, the dividing line. And they used to have these drinks in Huntington, uh, West Virginia, called the Home of Marshall. Where your show ponies at, just so you know. Put her over, whatever. Uh, they had these double dribbles. They was 24-ounce beers in a cup off the draft. So my brother, my uncle, myself, we get around a corner, and there's The Rock, the original Rock, Don Morocco. Mm. And he just had picked up these four fucking double dribbles. So it's four 24-ounce beers. And he gets them from the concession stand, and he turns and puts them on the table to barricade block in the back. Well, my brother, my uncle, myself are already there, as stated. And no fans have made it yet because we left before to get to the intermission spot. And, you know, we're big fans at the time. We kind of knew, like I said. And I'm like right to the table. Like, hey, Morocco, how do you get into this business, man? And he put the four beers down, and he picks up not a 12, but a 24-ouncer, and he goes and kills it. And he goes, and let's rip the biggest fucking Belcher burp as you could ever imagine. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, hell, I don't know. See the promoter. And he picked up the other three beers and turned around. Well, my brother and my uncle, we roll. We started dying laughing. By that time, more fans were getting up there to the cutoff spot. And we were sitting there dying laughing. And people going, what's so funny? What's so funny? We can't even fucking laugh. We can't tell them because it's that moment. So that's where I get. What? Hell, I don't. So they'll know when I go to camp. I'll have me a beer. I'll rip a big one and say, "Hell, I don't know." See the promoter. So I get to go to Australia several years later, and I've written about this in my book. Pin me, pay me, have booths for travel. Get on Amazon, whatever. Follow me at Bobby Blaze at seven forty four on Instagram and on Twitter. Thank you. See, I got to get these into my story. I'm with Morocco. I see him in, on an airplane when I hook up in Hawaii. I flew from LA to Hawaii and I said, oh, that's Morocco. Give him the nod. We both know we're the boys, you know. So we get there a couple of days into the tour. We're drinking beer after the shows. Everyone's getting along fine. It's a big tour. I wait till we're leaving for a building one day and there's a, we're in a van, a hill van, and I there's a seat between us. And so I said, if he's going to kill me, he's going to kill me. But I'm going to tell him that fucking story because I don't know how he's going to react to this. So he's up there in the passenger seat of the van. A seat between us, then myself and a couple of the guys behind me. And I say, hey, Morocco. And I tell him that story, right? And I, I think he might get mad or something. Cause you don't have people who act. But he's pretty laid back, as you know. He's cool. And he turns around and goes, well, Bobby, that's a good story. You know what that means, don't you? I'm like, oh, fuck. What I, you know. And he goes, Rrr. He just burped on impulse and said, we'll have to have a beer later this evening. And I said, all right, man. I reached over that seat and I shook his hand and I said, now I got my story, see? Because it just was, I don't know, six, five, six years later. But that's where I get that from. So, hell, I don't know. Sarah Bubbles, Brock's Boulder. It's a pleasure to be here on the Dudes at Ringside Podcast. You gentlemen, congratulations on 300. And all I know is this. See the fucking promoter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Love it. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have anything you want to promote, like upcoming shows or anything? Or uh, that you're gonna no, be I, on, or, I, uh... I think uh, I think we're done for the year. Um, I'll always put over wow. getting on uh, getting on Facebook or, or Instagram or any of the social media sites and checking out anything FTC has posted. We're on, we have a YouTube page, um, FTC Wrestling or uh, The Art of Grappling, FTC's Art of Grappling on Facebook. Uh, personally, I have – Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and then I have a YouTube channel as well. All that's under Brock's Boulder. I'm the only one on the internet, I hope. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, for me personally, I, I just, all I've got, guys, what are you? Bubbles, you? Well, see, I was on time for the podcast, so I did mine at the beginning. Ooh. 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 Ouch. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry I'm such a big star. People want my time everywhere. I'm, I can't help that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, but I didn't know Brox and Bobby, you guys 
know more than I do, but did you want to talk about what we have coming up at the end of November? Well, we could. I'm just going to let Bobby plug that. But, uh, Bobby, go ahead. Bring that up, buddy. So, I think we, the only big thing we have left, we're all going to WrestleCade. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to be in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Thank wow. you, Time Warp, and thank you, FTC. That's both our sponsors. We've got a lot of big stars coming in. Uh, we'll have all the FTC students going to be there. Uh, myself, I have a booth. Um, I know they're bringing in, I think, Jake Roberts. I think they're sponsoring uh, Rakishi. Uh, wow. There's several people that are bringing DDP. in DDP. Wow. Thank you. But in Winston Salem, North Carolina, and I think the last time I was there was four or five years. Joe, the wrestling agent from FTC, he knows he'll say, Bobby, that's four years ago. Whatever. I was there uh, on the third anniversary. I couldn't make the first one. We had a connection uh, and it started off really good. And that show has grown. The third one, they did a Smoky Mountain Wrestling panel there, and I was a part of that with Cornette and Bobby Fulton and several other people, uh, Dutch Mantel, Tracy Smothers, etc. cetera. Uh, so this time we're going for FTC and for Time Warp, and it's going to be um, – you have to look at the dates, but the, day, the Friday after Thanksgiving, we'll be there all day Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at WrestleCade in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It's one of the biggest events on the East Coast, especially mm -hmm. the Southeast – and um, I'm really looking forward to returning to that, especially under the FTC banner, as well as I'm representing. There's no heat there, anything like that. Time Warp. So I have to give a shout out to Earl from Time Warp and Joe, uh, the wrestling agent from uh, FTC. <laughs> That's going to be our last big event that I think we're doing this year because we have had a killer year on events. Um and I'm really looking forward to returning to that. We're going to do some traveling. That's about a four-hour, five-hour drive for us from where we're at. And um, it's always fun when you get to travel on the road and, and listen and learn from the road stories and also be around these other professionals. And the fan base there, they draw from other countries and just about every state in the United States. It's a huge fucking deal. Yeah. And uh, if you're watching this podcast – uh, dudes at Ringside Podcast, and you come up to our tables uh, that day, please say, hey, man, Bobby, I saw you and the dudes of uh, the dudes at Ringside Podcast. I saw you at Sarah Bubbles. I saw you at Brock's Boulder. I saw you at the fucking uh, Geek Metal Maniac fucking Joe Panther, whatever. You know, hey, because we're here. We're going to promote everyone. We're just trying to get over and have a good time. And fans, get out to see us at these events. Yes. Um, yeah. And if you see any of these people, on live events, don't go up to them and say, who that, who that, when they're talking about <laughs> who you? Uh, Joe Panther, who, who you? you, say, hey, I know you motherfuckers, you're the, guy, you're the dudes at ringside, we saw you on your podcast, and now you're at a fucking independent professional wrestling show, and you're here, and that's what I hope they say when they see Sarah, they see Brox, they see Bobby Blaze, because we do support independent professional wrestling, we do support podcasts, and we support women wrestling, um, so, hey, man, just get out there and dig what's happening on the independent professional wrestling scene. Thank yeah. you for your time. We yeah. appreciate yeah. it. And you. if nothing else, see the fucking promoter. Thank you so much, Sarah, Bobby, and Brox for coming on the podcast. We can't thank you guys enough for coming on the podcast, by the way. Can't. It's been taking, yeah. taking the time out, too. So, yeah. Thank you, so, guys. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much, really. No problem. No problem. And my closing is just keep what you're doing, guys, Sarah, Brock, and keep training him, Bobby. Keep showing him the knowledge. Keep giving him the knowledge. And just keep going, guys. Keep striding. And fans, just keep keep your pul finger on the pulse, and we will catch you in the next one. <laughs>